Salam alaikum everybody um, It's time for a, another arena So just in case anybody hasn't been here before And doesn't know what the arena is all about Maybe you're a new subscriber that's come because of the YouTube shorts through the week Or the TikTok flex um, This is the arena, we do it every two weeks inshallah um, And this arena is designed for non-Muslims Yeah and basically it's for non-muslims to um come and challenge islam directly as in basically oh your hadith says such and such a thing or your quran is this or your prophet says this okay so you can challenge islam directly or you can come and say i'm a christian uh, i've heard what you've been saying about christianity um, and i'd like to promote or present my reasons why christianity is true or you could be an atheist you can tell us why we're all stupid believing in sky wizards whatever it may be whatever it may be this is the show for you for anybody who says oh hamza never debates real christians he only picks up women in parks and things like this this is your opportunity bring your hammer times bring your shamans bring your bring whomever yeah you know seraphim if you're watching jump on uh mike jones answering philosophy this is for you yeah uh skydive phil if you're knocking about suppose waiting for you anyway Without further ado, um, I'm not alone here. Alhamdulillah, I have um, gladiators to help me um, respond to the claims of the contestants. So, without further ado, our first gladiator, mashallah, um, is Brother Sabur. Salam alaikum, my brother. How are you? Salam. How are you doing, Hamza? Alhamdulillah. I really do hope we get some atheists come on banging on <laughs> our down. Alhamdulillah. And we've also got Sharif, alhamdulillah, from Thought Veggie Podcast. Salam alaikum, bro. Oh, alaikum salam. How are you, bro? He's like he's like a resident gladiator now. You know what I mean? He's like, you know, like Elvis stayed in Vegas. He's like you can't get rid of him now. He looks like he's locked in my basement. You know that? <laughs> well, I know, like, I promise you, he's, he's not. And finally, mashallah, brother Yemeni. Alhamdulillah. How are you, Akhi? You good? Alhamdulillah. Salam alaikum, brothers. Or, or as I call him, the risk meister. Honestly, <laughs> you, you were brutal yesterday. Alhamdulillah. So uh, yeah, welcome to the arena. Inshallah. Um, let's hope we get some good guests today. Some. Sincere guests and some chopsy guests and some opinionated guests. You know, we, we don't want it all to come by. Are we want a little bit of friction? Anyway, let me put the link out. So you guys just chat amongst yourselves. Just what I saw the housekeeping. How's everyone doing? Alhamdulillah. How are you guys? Alhamdulillah. Can't complain. Yemeni, are you still doing the um, virtual reality stuff? I am actually, uh, not as regular, but um, what I have been working on recently for the VR stuff is uh, I did some research on the uh, on how Al Masjid al Nabawi looked like and the dimensions of it back in the seventh century, particularly in 629. That's interesting. Uh, so I managed to reconstruct it on a 3D, oh, wow. on a 3D model. So, but because my laptop is not that powerful anymore, it's three years old. It's, you know, the, the graphics card isn't all that. I've now passed on the model to some of the brothers that are on that to finish the, the small details that I can't do myself. Yeah. So they're working on that now. And then inshallah, they're going to upload it onto the VR and we'll be able so to show it. Christians and you know non-Muslims in general. This is how this was the mosque of the Rasulullah. This was his house because I've got I've also managed to find information about the houses as well. So I managed oh, wow. to construct the houses um, to their approximate dimensions where they were placed on the eastern side of the masjid. So they will be able to see this is these were the houses of the uh, of Rasulullah. This is how he lived, this is how simple he was. So, it's sort of going to take away this idea that he was this warmongering uh, guy that just wanted to take everything for himself. And and they will see the reality of how he, of how he lived in 629. Wow, that's really powerful, man. Alhamdulillah, right? We're gonna, we're gonna try a new formula today here on the arena. We're gonna give. You think two minutes or one minute is a good intro for the guest? Just let them speak for one minute when they first come on without interruption. Oh, yeah, I was going to mention that, Hamza. Are, you, are we going yeah. to do that format, yeah? Yeah, definitely. So, what, so do, one minute is enough? 30 seconds to up to a minute of presenting their case. 
Give them a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And we won't interrupt. We'll let them just come on. Um, this is going to be a this is a car crash already with the first guest, honestly. But I'm I'm going to I'm going to try to um, <sighs> be charitable. It's Robin Boom. Robin Boom. That is Robin Boom. What's so excited, right? Nadia Ahmed, I'm assuming you're all Muslim, man. You're not here to challenge Islam, are you? Come on, man. You're a non-Muslim. Jennifer, your devices are not connected. So, this guy's pretty decent. It's Ultimate Judeo Christian. Hello. Yes. This is Ultimate Judeo Christian YouTuber. Here to prove the Bible and words, very simply. So God authorized biblicalism. As just before you start, just before you start, just before you start, you've got one minute to make your point, claim, argument. Okay, ready? Hey Google, one minute timer. Uh, let me know sure. when I can start. One minute, and that's starting now. Go. Okay, God authorized biblicalism as. The first five words of the Bible states, in the beginning, God created. Creation is an expression of love. God is love. And he would make this known to us within early scripture. So we know with absolute certainty that our biblical God exists. And there is no reason for God to authorize the Quran, as that would contradict his infallibleness, as God wouldn't make us go through mental gymnastics. So that's my argument. I finish. That's it. Rem remind me, did you say that Jesus is God because he says that he loves his companions, disciples? He yeah, addressed my that argument. Same guy? Are you that same guy? Don't try to switch the topic again. Address the argument. Yeah, I'm just making sure you're the same guy, though. Are you the same guy who said that Jesus is God because he loves his companions? This, this is the same person. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. Nice. Who would like to address his argument that anyone understand what his argument was? Well, I mean, I think it's slightly different from what he posted in a private chat with it, with his uh, premises. Um, he, it's not. He from, well, I mean, you got from biblically awesome or awesomely God exists, and then you went into love, which, you know, love is not in any of your premises in the back it's chat. It's premise two. Well, God authorizes bi biblicalism. What's that could to do with love? Because the Bible is not all about love. I've already explained this. I have to well, do it again. I mean, well, that, well that's, the, that's where you got your problem, because the Bible isn't always about you, love. If you don't fact, understand the argument, I have to say it again. So God is love, and this is referenced within the first five words of the Bible. The first sentence, Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning God created. Creation is an expression of love as God created energy and matter for humans, entailing oxygen, water, food, electricity, etc. So he would make this known to us within early scripture, so we know with absolute certainty that our biblical God exists. Responses? Okay, well, because of the... Th when we say that the things that are created exists, that proves that God exists. This is correct. But to say that because that is because God exists, it proves that the Bible, you know, what the Bible says about God is true. That doesn't follow necessarily. It does. It's no. Genesis 1 1 comports with well, sacred look, theology. The thing is because hold on a second, because what you've also said is that, you know, the Quran, you know, it does sort of doesn't need to be there. Right. And it contradicts. But the Quran says the same thing that God created the heavens and the earth. No, it doesn't. Right. No, not What's in the first that? sentence. Don't start lying. Well, actually, the first sentence of the Quran well, doesn't well, say well, that. Not, I never, I never lied. I never said it was in the first sentence, right? For you to call it has me a to lie. Be. Hold on, hold on a second. If anything, right? When the Quran was revealed, it started off with chapter ninety-six, and it began by saying, "Read in the name of your Lord who created." So he, even with that, draw me an argument. No, you said it's Address not in the, the first, first sentence. sentence. Oh, hold on, hold on. You said it's not in the first sentence, right? Whereas in reality, the first verse revealed to us was read in the name of your Lord that created, right? 
It doesn't it's... say created in the first sentence of the Quran. Well, you're not listening. Cool. You're not listening. Just one second, Yami. What did what did you just hear him say to you? He's saying he's referencing the first sentence, but it doesn't say a creation point. That's not what he's saying. So the... Yes. No, it's not. Reference so you're not understanding one. what he's saying. I am he's saying to you, what were the first verses revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It's a question. I think that's that's is that to me. What were the first really What were the first words revealed to him? Are you asking me? Yes. Yes. So you're possibly dodging my argument. No. I'll make this simple again. You have to address the first sentence. Why? Of the Bible to the Why? Quran. Because Why? Why does it have to be in the first sentence? Why? Because it makes us know with absolute certainty that our biblical god exists as he would make right that and what was the first known. words revealed to the prophet muhammad peace and bless me upon him what were they so the first sentence of the quran does no that's not my question like creation point that's not my question you're, you're, you're just possibly dodging again address no the i'm first asking sentence. you you know do you know what the first words revealed to the prophet muhammad peace and bless upon him were or not your question is not an argument no, do you know or not? Do you know the first sentence of the Quran? No, I know the first words revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and upon him. Yes, I do. Yeah, I've read the first sentence of the Quran. No, that's not the question. I... No, you know, see, here's then the you're problem. Dodging the topic. You're dodging the No, you, you, you're just misunderstanding a question. You're trying what? to answer something not being no. asked of you. You're not addressing my argument properly. Oh, okay, I said I am. the first sentence of the Quran. I am addressing your argument. You're just not understanding the question. You're, you're, do you know what, you're do, do dodging, you know? You're possibly you know what the first word? You don't know, do you? You don't know the first words revealed to the Prophet peace and blessings were. You don't I've know. Read do you? the first sentence of the Quran, oh, and there's the no mention sentence? of the creation point. What's the first oh, sentence? What's the first sentence of the Quran? So there's <laughs> there's no to the mention. There's no. What's the, what mention. is it though? What what is it? There's. If you don't know what it is, just go. No, I no know what it is. Of a, there's You're no claiming mention you know what a, it is. There's no you... mention of a creation point. Read it. So it doesn't complement God's truthfulness. So what does it say? There's no mention of. I don't have to read it word for word, as you already know. There's you no know. mention of a creation point. You don't know. You don't know. Yes, you I do. Know. That's my argument. You're there not you addressing go. my argument. Yemeni's already Yemeni's already quoted it for you, but go on. So again, the first sentence of the Quran is contradictory because there's no mention of a creation point. So the false god in the Quran could be physical slash. But what is the first sentence that you're saying that makes the Quran false? What's that first sentence that was revealed to the Prophet, peace be upon him? So, if you want me to read it word for word, like, yeah, why yeah. do I have to quote? Why do I have to quote it word for word? Because you're you're making a claim. You're making a claim. You're making an. There's no mention of a creation point. Agreed. Which is what's the verse? Do you agree? There's no mention of a creation what's point. The first verse? What's the verse? Do you, I'm asking truth. you a clarifying question. You're not going to get me to read out something that is false. So do you agree that there's no you mention believe, of a creation point? You're not allowed to point? read it out. Are you saying you're not allowed to read it out? Is it against your religion? You're, to not read answering, out the you're not answering my clarifying question. Do you agree that there's no mention of a creation point in the first sentence of the Quran? Yeah, Brother Al Yemeni's already yeah. mentioned the first verse. So what, what, there could, there's what, no. There's what was no the first verse that he said? I'm honestly, You're not going to get me to read it out. You're not going to get me to read it out. All you need to know is there's no mention of a creation point. Well, so is, the false god the in the Quran there is could a be verse. physical. The first verse does mention creation point. That's the point. No, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't say created or creation. So it only does. an immaterial... No, it doesn't. Only well, an immaterial you tell me, truth. You, you obviously, you obviously must know this subject matter because you're trying to. You're very forthright upon it. 
So give me the evidence of what the first verse, which, which, which was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, what was it? It would you have to reference the first sentence of the Quran. You're so possibly dodging. Sentence? So what was the first sentence revealed? You should of know. The Quran? You should know already. You're not going to get me to read it out. Because You're not I addressing think my know. argument. Let's just say goodbye. I do know. Bye bye. You're a waste of time. No, I'm not. <laughs> Indeed, you are, sir. <laughs> I I honestly thought he was going to be serious as well. <laughs> This is this is the problem, you see. They come with these crazy arguments they have in the mirror, and then all of a sudden, when it comes into scrutiny, they're like, "What?" what, what, what? Yeah, I, I like what um, Brother Yemeni did there initially, but the guy wasn't really listening. The, one of the first things which is very important to do in any argument is to look at the person's the content within the premises and see if it logically follows. But in this case, <laughs> he, he he didn't even articulate the argument in a way in which the conclusion leads from the premises it, it's just a bit, it's just a bit confusing but generally yes that, that's that's a good thing for everybody watching to learn from uh, just always just ask them to word it and just read it and just think does it follow and that's the first hurdle where he failed and after he failed he just decided to just play games and, and, and just for the people who think oh we avoided answering and this and the other um, yemeni what was the first words revealed to the prophet muhammad read in the name of your lord who created <laughs> i mean this is the problem <laughs> and also just as another point as well his uh his uh premise that he sent in the private chat so he says premise one biblically Stroke awesomely, God exists. Premise two, God authorized biblicalism. Conclusion, therefore, Judeo-Christian presuppositionalism follows. Now, I don't know how that makes, you know, how it makes any sense as an argument. You know? I mean, he has this is the guy position before he's even made the first premise, so I don't know how it becomes his conclusion. But this is what? the guy who believes because Jesus, because God is love, and Jesus loved his companions. Therefore, Jesus is God. That's the logic. I mean, come on. Uh, how, how do you deal with that? Yeah. And you, I think also the other... You, sorry, so what are you saying? No, I'm just saying you, you just don't deal with it. You just give them a blank stare. <laughs> 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 you, can't, you can't react to that. It's like somebody, you know, yeah. what, what's that old saying? The, the lights are on, but no one's home. You just have to give yes. them that look. Like, I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> There's no one in the back chat. Everyone's afraid. Don't be afraid. But, but he was his, his other point was this was that he even said he goes the first verse first sentence revealed uh, did not use the word created. He even used that word created. Mm. And I think he's probably thinking of Surtul Fatiha and he's probably read Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. And even then to be honest, when he says Rabbil Alameen, Rabb yeah. means Lord, sustainer, the one who grows, the one who, you know, like a farmer who grows his crops, you know, uh, he's the one who creates, grows, sustains creation, you know. So, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I wanted to dive in more in terms of his actual argument, but to be honest, and I'll be, I'll be honest, because I, I sort of, obviously, you take people face value, take them with sincerity, etc. And I thought he was trying to be sincere. But when he was very adamant that he wasn't going to read the verse of Quran out, and then he was very adamant wrong, then yeah, you thought, mm, no, nah, this guy's a bit. Mm. He needs Hamza to deal with him. Sean. Oh wait, hello, I'm on. How are you doing, mate? Okay, I'm, listen. I'm good. I'm good. You, you got you got sixty seconds to make yeah. your point. Let me start it now. One okay. second. Hey Google, sixty second timer. Cool. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'll just go ahead. Starting now. Sweet. Okay. Um, so basically, all that I'm wondering is, so like, um, at the time of Jesus when he was being crucified, like it was only made to look like he was crucified, right? But God has control over everything. So, like, isn't that him being involved in the deception? of his own people for like 600 years until it was clarified 
Like, that's basically all I want to know. Like, are you okay with them, like your ancestors, basically being deceived? And you could say that, like, they deceived themselves, but um, I don't know. Like, it's kind of like victim blaming, I guess you could say, to say they deceived themselves and not that they were deceived. And yeah, that's basically my point. That's it, done, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's done. Okay. Um, who would like to take on that low hanging fruit? What low hanging fruit? I mean, uh, it's very simple from an Islamic uh, standpoint. Well, sure. if, you examine, if you examine the verse itself, right, it starts off by mm. saying that the Jews were boasting that they've killed the Messiah. And then Allah mm -hmm. goes on to clarify that they neither killed him nor, cruci you know, nor crucified him. Right. Rather, he was made to appear so, right? Right. So, but who made it appear so? Like, right. how was it made to appear so? So the nature of how it was made to appear so has not been told to us. Rather, what we have in, it, in our exegesis is a multitude of Judeo-Christian explanations for how it became so, right? How it appeared so. Which is very interesting because these are Judeo-Christian sources. They're not Islamic sources. So it's not Muslims coming up with these ideas. Rather, it was told by the Christians uh, and heard by the Christians who lived in, uh, in and around the 7th century saying mm -hmm. that Jesus wasn't crucified. Rather, you know, either Simon of Cyrene was uh, crucified because he carried the cross or Judas mm -hmm. uh, got crucified got crucified because he betrayed Jesus and that was his punishment by getting crucified. Right, yeah, I've heard that so, before. So. Um, yeah, so you're uh, uh, familiar with these. Right, now, right. So this is what's interesting, right? That the, exp the potential explanations that we have for how Jesus was saved and how he was made to appear uh, like he was crucified was mm -hmm. actually from Judeo-Christian sources. Now, this shows that the people from the time of Jesus up until the 7th century in those 600 years not all of them believed that. Rather, there was a significant group that did not believe that. That they did not believe that Jesus was crucified. So well, the question, but I, sorry, so I, I don't want to cut you off, let, but I just let me just finish. And okay, then, yeah, then sorry. So the question is, who was it made to appear so to? And the Quran answers this: it's the Jews, because they were the ones that were boasting. Now, if you study the Talmud and you actually look into the Talmudic uh, literature, you will see that the Jews themselves have three uh, different ways that they have recorded three different ways that Jesus has died. Yeah, now, when you, now, when you go to the end of the verse, it says those who, uh, you know, um, differ about this matter, they're in conjunction. So then, uh, sorry, in conjecture. Okay. Uh, so Allah then clarifies and says, for surely they did not uh, uh, crucify him, right? Mm -hmm. So in those 34 words of, the, of this verse, lays out the entire history, including that 600-year gap from the time of Jesus to the revelation. Mm -hmm. And we see this from Judeo-Christian sources, that they were not sure. They differed. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it was pure conjecture. Uh, the sources of how he was actually saved and how it was made to appear that he was uh, crucified actually come from the very Christians that, um, you know, that emanated from the first century. So Allah did not trick anyone, right? Rather, the the the, the, um, the exegetes of the Quran they tell us very clearly that the disciples knew he wasn't crucified, right? Um, and so, the, well, sorry, the, the who says that? So the exegetes of the Quran, right? Because the in the Quran we we speak about the, uh, the Allah speaks about the disciples and how mm -hmm. they were believers in Christ, right? And that they oh, I, yeah. Him. So, but mm, for them yeah. to come after and then confirm that, like, no, they didn't see it. But how did that message get out that he was Sean. crucified if that wasn't Sean. the truth? Sean, sorry yeah. to interrupt. You're not listening to what my brother Yemen is telling you. This is not a Muslim idea of Jesus not being crucified. There were Christians. At the no, time I, I heard you. Uh, they, I heard that. Right. Sorry, sorry. Right. So you're not I'm Muslim. getting to a point. I'll, I'll get. Yeah. I'll, the sorry. Didn't, uh, was like, sorry, Sean. The Muslims didn't invent this idea. It, it, the, right. the Quran just confirms this idea. History reports that he was crucified because that's what the people believed, which is what the Quran says. So the Quran right. confirms the history. Yeah, I, mean, I don't understand your point. Why do you believe he was crucified? Well, because it was made to look like he was. 
And why do you believe he was though? Because that's what the people at the time believed. That's our history. Right. But that's not, why do you believe, not them, you? I believe because <laughs> for 600 years, that was the belief no, it wasn't. that it wasn't. the majority, it wasn't. I would say the majority of people no, care. Only, only the majority because they slaughtered the ones who disagreed. Hmm. I don't, you said that it was it was it the Jews who, like, who pushed the idea then of the crucifixion? So the Jews are the ones that wanted him dead, right? So they would have uh, boasted right. and spread this idea that they actually did kill him, because obviously. But then why would they? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I, I, but now I'm getting to the point. Now I'm putting the picture together. So why would they also, like, push the? story of the resurrection if they wanted to say that oh we killed him who like, pushed the story the of res resurrection who pushed the story of resurrection probably the same people who pushed the story of the crucifixion no no forget no. crucifixion who 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 pushed the story of resurrection uh i don't know you just said the jews did well i would imagine the same people who pushed the story of the crucifixion so now you're imagining but, things you just uh, whoever so the, the, uh, Sean, well, Sean, look, it's, Sean, it's let, let me story, break it down. right? Like no, one Sean, group Sean. of people made it, or was it multiple groups? Of no, people Sean, made look, the look. Book? you gotta, you okay. gotta understand something, right? If Jesus was made to appear like he was crucified, right? Mm -hmm. The Jews would have reported this, right? Because a, they wanted him to be crucified and killed, because they, you know, absolutely despised him. They didn't want him to be the Messiah. They didn't want him to be the Son of God or a prophet, because this was their reputation for killing prophets. This is recorded in the New Testament. Right. Right. So okay. naturally they're gonna boast. They're gonna be like, you know, this is this the Messiah that was prophet you know prophesied to us? You know, we managed to kill him. He's supposed to be the king, you know. They, so they were very mocking, right? Even if you see in the mm. in the gospel of Matthew, right? Uh when he's uh, tried, they mock him, you know. Are you now the, are you the son of God? Are you the Messiah? You know, they mock him, right? Yeah. So when they get him killed, this is naturally their sort of disposition. So naturally, when they think that they've been crucified, they're gonna they're gonna, you know, make it well known because they don't want people to believe in him as the Messiah because they believe that the Messiah should be their king, not some That's guy right. that ends up on a cross. So, right. but they don't believe he would be risen again, would they? Because if they think he's false, they're not going to push this story that he's risen again. Mm -hmm. But if, even if you look into the New Testament itself, now the New Testament is an evidence to the. Uh, to the truthfulness of this verse in the Quran. Because when you look at the New Testament horizontally regarding the crucifixion, you will see mm -hmm. there are many things that are in conjecture about it, right? When he was, uh, when he when he died, the prophecy uh, that Jesus states about where a prophet can die or cannot die, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the event itself, the timeline itself, the, the concept of the three days and three nights, right? The, even the details about the crucifixion, uh, sorry, the resurrection, differs. His last right? words. His last words uh, differs. The what's written on um, the, sign of the, cross. The, the sign of the cross that differs. There's a lot of things that differ. Right. And then you've got so, Christians saying it was. One second. Then you got Christians yeah. saying it was Simon of Cyrene. I think it was the Basilians were saying it's yeah. Simon of Cyrene. Mm -hmm. um, according to the Gospel of Barnabas, I know it's uh, Judas. Judas. Yeah. Um, so. There were people believing that someone else was crucified and it wasn't Jesus. It's not something dramatic or remarkable or deceitful. It's just Allah's just telling you they thought he was crucified and he wasn't. Yeah, but well, just because some people believe something doesn't make it the truth, right? Right. So here's the thing, you see, the Christians who didn't believe that he was crucified were killed. So it was the Christians who covered up the truth by killing those who didn't follow the narrative. So what was, like, so what you've was been the Christian deceived. narrative? You've been where... deceived by... You've been deceived by Christians hiding the truth, covering the truth, because they're the ones who killed those Christians who spoke out about the truth. What? But there were so many people at the, like, there were Jewish people and non-Jewish people and, like, Romans and, like, whatever. There were a bunch of people at the crucifixion. Name, name me now, which Jew, and... name me which Pharisee or Jew or whatever you like to see witnesses mm. Jesus' resurrection. Name one. Um... Who is, uh, well, I think you guys discount him, but I think Paul was no, no, no. like a no. Judeo after his, before. After his crucifixion who, and resurrection. 
Who when did he appear to the Pharaoh? Okay, I'm, I'm going to make it easy for you because I'm a nice okay. guy. I'm nicer sure. than Yemeni. Uh, <laughs> sure. I, I'm, I'm going to lead you by the hands. Okay. According <laughs> to the Gospel of Mark, no sign will be given. Yeah. According to the Gospel of Matthew, the sign of Jonah. Yeah. Son of Man and Belly. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, okay. It's the sign of Jonah. Who, who was promised the sign of Jonah? Who was promised the sign of Jonah? The the people at that time. So if no. they didn't see the resurrection, how would they who have seen the sign promised, of Jonah? Who was promised the sign of Jonah? The people, uh, like the Jews or something, maybe? I don't know. I I well, don't Jesus know, but I imagine the people at the time, like Jesus' followers, right? No, no. They don't need convincing. Okay. Who needs convincing that Jesus is who he claims to be? It's the Pharisees. Well, I don't believe it's the Pharisees. I think it's the Sadducees. But anyway, the, the, okay. the, Jesus says this adulterous nation asked um, for a sign. This is Gospel of Matthew. Right, yeah? right. No sign should be given but the sign of Jonah. As right. Jonah was inside the belly of the whale three, day, the, three days and three nights, so the Son yep. of Man should be in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. Yeah? Uh-huh. Right. Who was promised the sign? The Pharisees, yeah? Uh, I, I would imagine following your logic, yeah. Right. This is a failed prophecy because Jesus never appeared to them. Well, that's what I'm telling you, that... I think Paul was like, in the past, he was like a Jew who converted to the way of Christ and he was a Pharisee as well. Paul wasn't a Pharisee. No, am I mistaken? Maybe it was someone else. I, I'm not really like too up to date on it, but- uh... No, no, don't get me wrong. The biblical narrative is he is a Pharisee, but Paul wasn't a Pharisee. Oh, okay. okay. So they're creating the fact that he was one to perpetuate the idea that he has been revealed to the Pharisees? So basically perpetuating the idea that it was the Pharisees who had a problem with Jesus and wanted him dead rather than the Sadducees. Because if the Sadducees want Jesus is dead, it's a political death because the Sadducees mm-hmm. are representing Rome. So if, you, if the Romans killed Jesus, it was for political reasons. They wanted him cruci- to look like he was killed for blasphemous reasons. The Pharisees wouldn't, cruci- wouldn't want Jesus dead for claiming to be the Messiah because they were waiting for the Messiah. If, if, if you claim to be the Messiah to the Pharisees, they'd be waiting for you to do your miracles. They'd be watching for you on the mount to, to do mm-hmm. something, waiting for God to speak to you to do something. They wouldn't kill you. Yeah, That's not the Pharisees' right. way. How do we know this? How do we know this? Because it was the Pharisees that warned Jesus that were coming to arrest him. And it was the Pharisees right. that petitioned for oh, the yeah. release of Peter in the Sanhedrin when the Sadducees wanted to have him killed as a follower of Jesus. And, and it, was, um, it was the Pharisees that basically petitioned for their release. So imagine... If the Pharisees are plotting to kill Jesus in his message, why are they petitioning him? Why are they warning Jesus they're coming to arrest him? And why then are they uh, saving the, the, his disciples from death? It doesn't make any sense. And then if Paul is a Pharisee, why is Paul a Pharisee going to the Sadducees who hated each other to ask them for permission to get authority to go to Syria to arrest Christians? Where first thing is, a Pharisee wouldn't work with a Sadducee in that way. Second thing, the high priest had no power in Syria to give authority to Paul for anything. So the whole narrative is black. There's no reason why Paul would get authority from the high priest in Jerusalem to go to Syria because they have no authority there. So when you start, see, here's the problem you see. If you're reading this New Testament as some historical record, you've got a massive problem. You can't even demonstrate where this releasing somebody on the day of uh, the Passover, uh, where is that in um, tradition? It isn't there. It's not something I don't know anything did. about that, but. Yeah, you know, when they said, who should I release, Barabbas or um, Jesus the Messiah or Jesus Barabbas? And the people said, release Jesus Barabbas. Oh, Jesus oh, Barabbas okay. yeah, to be yeah, a right. rebel leader. You're right. like, what? The, the right, Roman right. governor of Jerusalem in a city on the verge of rebellion releases the leader? Really? <laughs> Do you think that historically makes any sense whatsoever? It doesn't. It doesn't. So when you start piecing it all together, you start questioning, you should, you should question the whole narrative. Right. Sean, um, oh. Sean, I take it you're a Christian, yeah? Well, that's what I was raised with, but like I, I kind of like explored other religions, like uh, Buddhism and stuff. But I'm coming back to Abrahamic faiths, and I'm just trying to figure out like what's what. But I do have that like Christian background. Okay, so Sean, what, what I was, I think your initial question was basically a question about um, can God was, dis. Is that your question? My question was basically, is it, oh, well, yeah, is it okay? Like, are you okay with the followers of, like, I guess, because you, well, 
because then it's confusing because you don't you wouldn't see it that way because you you guys think that Christianity is like an offset of the Abrahamic faith, right? Like you guys don't believe it's the truth, so it wouldn't yeah, be deceiving right. your own people to say that he was crucified and then the crucifixion led to like the forgiving of your sins and stuff. But for those people, they are deceived, right? So now you're saying two billion people are condemned because of the lies of their ancestors and like are you okay with that like those two billion people are just going to hell and you're like oh whatever well, not my well, problem because they're they're stupid enough to believe it but like yeah but, that's just what they, sean, that's just what their parents sean, told them and stuff yeah sean currently we have eight billion people on the planet so for christians they believe mm -hmm. the other six billion people are condemned to hell yeah mm -hmm. so i, I don't mm -hmm. think it's a case of you know just because of the consequences of, you know, uh, that these people might be condemned or not condemned, make something true or false. Yeah, I don't think we should uh, adhere to that position. In fact, the Islamic position right. is a lot is a lot less is a lot less. You know, uh, you know, uh, compared to the Christian position. The Christian position is you have to accept Jesus. If you don't accept Jesus, then you are condemned, irrespective of whether you've heard Jesus's name or not, heard Christianity or not. There are people right. who believe that. You Condemned. Whereas Islam has a lot more, uh, you know, has a view which is more. I don't want to use the word relaxed, yeah, but has a view which is a, which says that mm. you're only condemned based upon the knowledge that's given to you. Yeah. So if you've not been given certain. Oh knowledge, damn! So yeah. now that I have this knowledge, I'm going to hell if I deny it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it, you know, obviously you've got to learn it. You've got to study it. You can't just simply, you know, hear it and then you know that's it you've got to accept it you've got to understand the evidences and proofs so i'm just saying is that that's not an argument i don't think it's an argument to simply saying that because two billion people have accepted one belief system that therefore it must be true yeah and the right. consequences is that they've been something wrong well lots of people have been following things which have been wrong yeah you know uh, for a long period of time people used to believe the earth was the center of the universe yeah, mm -hmm. uh, people used to believe the earth was flat, but you know, just because a lot of people used to believe in that doesn't mean therefore it's right or wrong. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing I want to say is that look, you know, I commend that the fact that you're coming back to some sort of Abrahamic belief system, but you know, mm -hmm. in the in the sort of the chronology or the sort of the history of the Abrahamic beliefs, you had the Jews who have a very monotheistic, radical monotheistic belief, one God, one person. And you have the Muslims who have a very, you know, strong belief in one God, one person. And then you have this in-between Christian group, uh, you know, who come with this new idea, which seems to be influenced by the Greco-Roman culture of their time, which is the fact that you have three persons, one God, you know, you have all, you know, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, the Father is not the Son, the Father is not the Holy Spirit. Spirit is not the sun, right. but there's only one God. There seems to be this right. really strange notion uh, that comes out. And it's so strange, by the way, I don't know if you know, Sean, but you know, Jews, they're not allowed to pray in churches or even enter churches because they see it's oh. pagan. Oh, wow. Oh, really? but Sean, I don't know if you also know, but Jews are allowed to enter mosques and even pray in mosques because okay. they don't see Muslims engaged in paganism. So if you look at this sort of this continuity of the message you've got moses abraham you know noah who are, who have revealed this idea of one god yeah and then you've got this new idea that comes in this, this almost becomes inserted which is this sort of the son is jesus is god the holy spirit is god the father is god and then you've got this other idea that comes later on which is islam which says no there is only one god which seems to follow the continuity of the past prophets do you not think that's right yeah i believe that it follows the continuity if you think that the end goal is one god which would make sense because that's the message of all the prophets even jesus said like there's yeah. only one god um yeah i i don't know i think uh so it, it makes sense from that perspective that i'm, I, right, I'm not yeah. giving i'm not giving you detailed argument just trying to say just think about this and think mm -hmm. also about the fact that you know when Christianity, Christianity was very different to sort of Islam uh, and even to a certain extent Judaism, yeah, because Christian Christian doctrine developed in the background of 
a very, very tiny minority of Christians that existed amongst a, an oppressive Roman Empire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was very difficult, obviously, to be to openly preach. And then at the same time, you've got this oppressive Roman Empire that then adopts Christianity in about the third or fourth century Christian era. And suddenly you start to see the elements of Roman culture, civilization, and even beliefs and practices start to become adopted within Christian, uh, uh, you know, ethos, yeah, or uh, belief systems as well. You know, like the ideas of a resurrected God, yeah. It, it has Greco-Roman connotations to it, the idea of this tripartite being, yeah. Again, mm -hmm. if you studied Neoplatonism, yeah, you'd understand that Neoplatonist thought within Greek philosophy has this idea of a tripartite type, you know, uh, picture of how creation comes about. You've got God, who's a divinely simple being, then you have the divine intellect or the universal intellect and the universal soul. And they seem to marry very, very, you know, uh, they map onto this idea of Father, the God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it's like almost a Greco Roman incorporation that comes out uh, that sort of formulates the Christian doctrine. So it sort of makes sense if you look at the history of it, of why we see the Christian doctrine the way it is. You know, even the fact that you have the Holy Roman Empire, you know, you have the mm -hmm. Pope sits on as the, you know, uh, or the, 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 the Greek part of the Roman Empire, the Con uh, Constantinople, that they're called the, the, the Emperor, he's called the Caesar as well. You know, uh, even though he's also the head of the uh, Orthodox Church. So you see a lot of this influences of Roman in and Greco-Roman influences within Christianity. And therefore, when you see that and then you see the particular belief systems and practices within Christianity, you can now start to see that actually why there's not a continuity of what we saw within the Old Testament with Abraham, Moses, Jacob, Joseph, etc., is probably because of the influences of the environment that that Christianity developed from, which was Roman and like kind of pagan. Yeah, look, even the fact that we we have what is it Easter holiday, and you have bunny rabbits, uh, and yeah, eggs. Where, where did that come from? <laughs> and yeah, that sort of married with the idea that Jesus was resurrected. Yeah, or you've mm -hmm. got Christmas as well, and you know December 25th and people have said that people pagans used to celebrate December 25th as a winter solstice you know mm -hmm. so the, the, I think the, the way that yeah sorry go on go on oh, um, no, go on, go on, go on, go on. yeah so I think the way that I see it and I guess other Christians see it as well is like that like kind of paganism if you could if you want to call it that like I guess that's what it is but it's like it kind of has a you know, it's like a God who does things for us. You know, he sent his only begotten son to die for our sins, you know, because he knows our inadequacies. He knows that we would never be able to live a perfect life. So that's why he took on that challenge himself and he fulfilled that prophecy. And then through just faith in Jesus Christ, that's how you're saved. So I think it's Sean, like, it's Sean, easy to say that. Sean. Um, sorry, can I just finish this point? Uh, it's easy to say that, Horrible. yeah, you could just convert to Islam, but then it's like you're taking something away from Christians. You know, it's like you're forgiven through faith, sure. but then, sorry, let me finish. But then mm -hmm. Islam comes and says, no, you're not forgiven through your faith, but if you believe in my faith, then you're forgiven. Like, does that does that make sense? Do you see what I'm saying there? Sean, we all know. Yes. We all know you think you've got the golden ticket to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. We all know that. <laughs> we all know you think you're going to go see the Chocolate Factory. We're here to tell you it's a fake. And why it's a fake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. see, the problem you've got is you're quoting Jesus as if like he said these things. As if it's true. Okay. You're quoting Paul like what he says is true. Mm -hmm. That your filthy rags, uh, 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 your, your good deeds are filthy rags before the Lord and everything like that. You're quoting these things as if they're true. Is that what it says? Why, do you, why do you believe Jesus yeah. said those words? And, and, and why do you trust what Paul says? Uh, I guess the idea is more appealing. Yeah, but Sean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, like, we're, we're struggle, but it's a brilliant idea. But you're not going. Sean, I know a lot of Christians, they, they tend to feel uh, an emotional yeah. connection to this no, idea. It's fine. That, that, that it's fine, I'm not... It's fine. 
Yeah, sorry, Sharon, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I can hear yeah. you. I was going to say, a lot of people have... I'm sorry, I just saw him laughing, so it was distracting me. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, people have this emotion, Christians have this emotional connection that God the Father sent his only begotten son to save mankind, yeah? Uh, yeah. But I think if you deep dive into this a little bit deeper, you'll start to think to yourself, hold on, does it really make sense? Yeah, there's a lot of things on that story level that doesn't really make sense. One of which mm -hmm. is, well, why did Moses not teach this? Why did Abraham not teach this? Why did Joseph not teach this? Why did Jacob not teach this? Why is it for um, for thousands upon thousands of years, this was never a doctrine taught by the prophets of the past? If, if it was that important, yeah, you'd, you'd want to teach that at the beginning, wouldn't you? Yeah, so the fact that... It yeah, that's what I would thought so too. Yeah, so, you, so the fact that you don't have that, then... You think, hold on, that sounds a bit strange to me. The other issue is this, is that yeah. it doesn't really make sense. In my mind, it doesn't make sense to me that you have you have human beings who are sinful. They need redeeming. Mm -hmm. We agree upon that. They need the salvation. So the way God saves people is by sacrificing a completely innocent person who's never done anything wrong. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to me. And then even the concept well, of Well, who what, is himself? Yeah, but... That's the belief. Yeah, but then he, that, again, it doesn't make sense because God can't Sean, die. Sean, Sean, Sean. Well, your oh, sorry. Concept, your concept of God yeah. is an, mm -hmm. an unjust, unmerciful God. Yeah? Your God and your perception can't forgive. Has to wow. get paid. Because your God, your God has to get paid in blood. Can't well, that's what, well, sacrifices, that's what blood sacrifices you know, are. Why, why, you know, why can't God just forgive? Why does he need to get paid in blood? I don't know, but God was the one who started with that. Where's the forgiveness? After Jesus, where, where, there are no the more blood sacrifices. Where's the forgiveness? With Jesus. Well, no, it's not, because he got paid. Where's the forgiveness of the debt? He got paid. <coughs> that was the final payment for forgiveness. No, but Who's why do you need to pay? If you, if you take payment, right, if, mm -hmm. if Sharif owes me a tenner, Right, and Yemen says I'll pay for his behalf. Have I forgiven anything? Have I got paid? Well, I once, well, you're just making things right. No, but have I got paid? Yes. Have I forgiven anything? Yeah. No. So if, uh, if God get, so if Jesus was a ransom, who got paid? Uh -huh. Who got paid? God, I guess, or God us. We, we well paid paid us. Basically. No, but God ransomed. No, but God ransomed Jesus to pay who? For our sins. To pay who though? Who got paid? Uh, yeah, I don't really know. I, I don't understand. I guess. I don't. It doesn't understand. make sense, does it? I mean, this is the thing, Sean. This should be alarm bells ringing. Yeah, wait a minute. God ransomed His Son mm -hmm. to pay who? Well, pay himself. Take one money of his one pocket, put in his other pocket. Pay himself. Well, right. It doesn't yeah. make sense. And the, I'm uh, just okay. Yeah, that. That, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like him jerking himself off. Sorry to like put it so graphically, but it's like he's the only one who can forgive us, and then he dies. But like, well, he didn't forgive anything. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. He well, he sure. actually went through sure. that pain. He didn't That's forgive anything. Like, he didn't forgive what anything. You, how? What do you What do you mean? He got paid. Because he got paid. Now, here's the thing you've got to reconcile. Wait, why, what? Do we, why do we not see this in the Old Testament, this blood <laughs> payment for sin? Why don't we see this? What do you, you do with blood sacrifices? That's, no, that was like, That's for unintentional sin. Show me or, the intentional... Uh, what, what was the, uh, what like was the blood sacrifices sacrifice? and stuff. No, no, it wasn't. The, the day of atonement was for unintentional sin. So tell me what the blood payment was, when and how for intentionally... Bad things. Uh, I don't know, but I think there there. used to be like animal sacrifices and blood sacrifices. Again, so if people do again, that, I could be wrong. Not. Just you tell me. I don't know. Well, then it's not there. It's not there. And if you read the book of Ezekiel, God is clear. He says. But then, why the are there sacrificial room, rooms in like the temple? I'll say it again to you. Sins. Unintentional sins oh, you may have done over the year. Mm -hmm. You weren't aware of. That's what. Oh, that's what yeah, you but one, once you're, yeah. And the thing is, Sean, even even when it came to unintentional sins, if you couldn't do a blood sacrifice, it would be like a plant or a flower or something, you know, because yeah. you couldn't always afford to, uh, you know, have meat to sacrifice. 
So mm -hmm. even for unintentional sins, it wasn't always a well, blood sacrifice. Even deeper than that, Yemeni, even deeper than that, right, Sean, Sean, in the book of Ezekiel, yeah. this is what God says. If the wicked man, who is the wicked man? The wicked man who does wicked things. The wicked man is intentionally bad, yeah? Okay. If the wicked man turns away from his wickedness and keeps my laws, then his wickedness will not be reminded of him. Yeah? Oh, okay. No blood sacrifice. No believe in this and that. Just repent. Yeah. Repent from your evil ways and do yeah. good. And God will forgive you. I thought it was strange that, like, if you were just forgiven through Jesus, then, like, why would you even send down the Torah? You could just send down, like, you could just send down Jesus in the first place, and then everyone wouldn't be forgiven. Yeah. That's what I was, I was having a conversation with someone earlier about that. And what they said was that even, like, the people who did not know about Jesus, like, they were forgiven because God, on, like, a bigger scale, knew, like, the timeline of you know like between adam and jesus those people who didn't know about are you, jesus are you saying were Pharaoh, forgiven in Pharaoh's in heaven. uh i don't know but th Why that's not? like kind of the that's kind of the weird thing because then everyone gets into heaven in that everyone. Case. Yeah, well, it doesn't make any sense does it where's the justice now justice out the window now yeah i'm telling you christianity makes no sense now whatever direction you come from it whether you want to come from a, the the a theology side you want to come from the historicity side the reliability of the text side, wherever angle you come from it, it doesn't make any sense. And I'm telling you, you're going to have to put yeah. your mind in a box because you ain't going to answer these questions. You're just going to have to ignore them and dream about Willy Wonka's chocolate factory that you're not going to. <laughs> so why, like, uh, sorry. Um, oh, I just lost it. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I guess that makes sense. I don't, like i'm still kind of like i'm still kind of just like caught up on the whole like i guess i don't know how could the people at the time have seen the sign of jonah if like we're only seeing it 600 years later we're like oh damn he like he really was sure. saved but like sure. the belief already was that he was saved sure you know if you read the gospel of mark mm. there is no sign promised there is no what there is no sign no sign of Nothing. oh there's no in, sign in the gospel of mark, see. In the gospel yeah. of mark the, 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 jesus says these words this adulterous nation asks for a sign no sign shall be given and he walks off i i thought that was no sign shall be given except the sign no no that's in matthew matthew oh, embellishes okay. luke embellishes mark which is matthew and luke have copied from no sign will be given and you know how we know this is true do you know how we know this is true from your text? Why there was no sign promised? Mm -hmm. Because what? how did the disciples of Jesus react when the women told them that he's resurrected? What did they say? I don't know. They sent her away. He said, you're a crazy woman. Yeah. Were they, were they men expecting a resurrection after three days? No. They actually, eventually, uh, jo according to the Gospel of John, John and Peter raced to the tomb. Seen it was empty and went home. <laughs> didn't even didn't think twice about it. So the point is this: if you're, if, if imagine the scenario, imagine you're watching a movie and Jesus is saying, "In three days, I'll rise," or whatever. Yeah, mm. you'd be waiting for them three days to pass. Oh, come on, come on! This is only day two. Come on, day three. Our Lord is coming. And then a woman mm -hmm. comes and says, "He's done it." Oh, shut up, you crazy old bat! Basically, that's what they responded. That is not the actions and response of men waiting for a three-day resurrection. She Which said that to believers of Christ? So like Peter, believers? John, and James. Um, I oh, would say right. so. what? The uh, disciples. Oh, really? Right. So the disciples of Jesus, who Jesus chose to walk with him, who witnessed his miracles, who heard yeah. his parables, and the explanations to his parables, right? right? These men, when they were told that Jesus has risen after three days... <laughs> so go away, crazy woman. woman. Did they be now? Do you know where that behaving, is? Like, what, what passage is that? So I could look that up. Were they behaving like men who were awaiting a resurrection? Did anyone of the no, disciples no. anticipate a resurrection? Was any of them counting three days down? No, none of them. Why? Uh, because Jesus never said that. that. I know. Because according to the Gospel of Mark, there was no three days and three nights promised. Well, if if it said that 
well you said it's a, well you if you say it's a fabrication then you could just dismiss anything so that's why it's kind of hard to argue because it's like well your book is corrupted and like we could use it to like prove our book in some instances and okay, it's not corrupted there sure. but then understand it's corrupted in others understand one thing yeah. i wouldn't want demolition of christianity doesn't make islam true i've never made that claim okay so i'm not saying christianity is false because islam says so I'm saying Christianity is false because it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever, whichever way you want to peel it. None of it makes sense. Then you got Paul can... coming after us making all these grand <laughs> things, contradicting the disciples of Jesus. And you take the words of Paul, you're like, what? Hey, what's going on here? Where, the only thing where's I can say the is like... all of this? Where, where's the guidance? Where's the leading into all truth? You're all combating each other, you Christians. Where's the Holy Spirit correcting people, guiding people? Where's well, the gospel writers with but... their inspiration of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> it doesn't like ugly things. So, you know, when like this like nonsense, not nonsense, but like uh, attacks come out, it's not something that has to defend itself. So there's no like it's set like the Christian beliefs is like if someone doesn't believe or agree with you or they just want to shit on it, then like just let it be. Let it go. Sure, you know, sure. so there's never going to be someone who's like sure. strong enough to stand up for the belief. The disciples because, of Jesus yeah. disagreed with Paul, and yet both have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Who, who's, who's got the truth here? The disciples of Jesus or Paul? Uh, I would imagine the disciples of Jesus and Obviously. Paul, if he follows the disciples well, of well, Jesus. No, you can't. You can't. If there's a dispute between them, you can't follow both, can you? Uh, well, you could both have the Holy Spirit and have differing opinions, not about what's how the, to get it. What's the point? Does it correct you? Well, that's what. What are they saying? That's opposing. Like I don't understand. Paul is telling Jews, you, you know, that they're just. Comes really quickly, yeah. No, no, I'm not going to jump in. I just want to take it slowly with Sean because I think there's a lot of background information he's not aware of that you're mentioning all right, all right. about what what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit in the context of disputes. Sorry. Mm. Oh, Go right. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think we've load loaded him with information anyway that he needs to reflect on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that's it. Right now, I'm kind of. <laughs> I do have to reflect on some of the information, well, Sean, but I could still take in a little bit more. Sean, I like. Yeah. Just if you just reflect on what we've said so far, right? You came on mm -hmm. and you talked about the chapter, you know, the verse in the Quran. Now, like mm -hmm. I said, 30, there's 34 words, right? Mm -hmm. And it's caused a debate among Christians and Muslims for 1,400 years. 34 words. On a supposed, mm. uh, on a supposed historical fact that Jesus was crucified, yet it was called into question severely by thirty-four words. And when we broken it well, down, that's because there's down, no way to. No, sorry, there is because sorry, as, as, I've, as I've mentioned, right? Yeah. When we've broken it down, we know that the Jews were the ones that wanted him killed. This mm. is recorded with you as well in your mm. New Testament, right? The stories of how it was made to appear so it, didn't come from Muslims, yeah. it came from Christians. Yeah. Right? And which is interesting because yeah. there are different stories, and yet the Quran then goes on to tell you that those that those who deferred about it don't know. Hence if, the different uh, stories, again agreeing with Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, with history. But um, and as Hamza said, what do you call it? The idea that people reported um that jesus was crucified also confirms the quran because it says that that's what they believed right right but if the jews wanted jesus to be killed and he was resurrected wouldn't it be better to put into question no, no, that no, no, no. he whether he was executed or not no no but sean listen right gospel the gospel of mark is the earliest gospel right it doesn't record anything about the resurrection nothing right there is no account of the resurrection the resurrection only comes in from Matthew onwards, right? And from Matthew, Luke, and John, it's it's different, right? It's not the same. Was, I was under the impression that all of the Gospels, no, like, Mark has no. They were account. all around at the exact same time, but they no. were just like like in different parts of the world. Well, not different parts of the world, but like different areas of the city or whatever. No. Uh, well, and then sometimes, sometimes they would meet up and have like events, no. but like mostly they were missionaries. No. 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 So uh, the, the, the point is, this is what we want, to, want you to reflect on. Hamza also mm -hmm. broke down the history of how you will find historical problems within 
the New Testament, <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot here to reflect upon. Uh, so we're not going to give you any more information um, because it is already a lot. There's a lot of knowledge that we've yeah. spent years, you know, studying, and now we've tried to <laughs> give it to you in like two, three minutes. <laughs> So I appreciate you want that, to go away and do your study. Look, study the Quran. Study the claims of the uh, the Quran. And here's something mm -hmm. interesting. I'll give you one more thing, actually. Sure. What's interesting is in that in chapter ten, verse ninety-four of the Quran, Allah says this, right? He says, "If you are in doubt that this book is from uh, from God, from Allah, right? Yeah. Ask the Jews. Uh, ask the people of the book, i.e., the Jews and the Christians. And then when he says when he says this, he says, "Ask the people of the book, and then have no doubt." That this book is from your Lord, which is interesting because when you ask the Jews, what do they say? That Muhammad is a false prophet. Jesus is not the Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. Their concept of God, although He is one, they've got slight differences. Yet Allah is telling us to ask them. The Christians, they believe in the crucifixion, the resurrection of uh, Christ. They believe that He is the Son of God, or even, or even God Himself, right? Mm -hmm. They disagree. You know, they don't believe in Muhammad, peace be upon Him. But yet, Allah's telling us, ask them. If you're not sure, ask them. So, uh, Sean, this is this is for you. If you're in doubt, mm -hmm. ask the people of the book. And you have, I think you've done that to a certain degree. And you've thought yeah. about it, right? You've questioned the New Testament and the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And when you actually look at it, you see, really, despite the belief of the Jews and the Christians, really what you actually see is that there is one God, that all the prophets preach the same thing, worship one God and, and don't worship anyone else. You see that the people would follow the prophet of their time, which is exactly what Muslims, Muslims do, right? Hmm. You would see that in the Old Testament, there is no prophecy of, a, of a, a crucifixion of God himself or a son of God or even the Messiah, right? There is no prophecy of that. And there is uh, no talk of a resurrection. Even when Hamza mentioned the, um, the sign of Jonah, Jonah was alive in the, in the belly of the world. He wasn't dead, Right. So what right. sign of death is going to come from a sign that is supposed to mirror that of a person who was alive? Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah? So th there's a Do lot you know, of things. I, so and, I was just going to uh, mention yeah. one point. Yeah, I was just going to mention, just, uh, just to add to what sure. Yemeni is saying actually, really quickly, is that if you look at the end of Mark, you'll probably find a discussion or a description about resurrection. Uh, but what Yemeni is mentioning here is the fact that the end of Mark is known as a forgery. It's actually considered concocted by later writers because they were they were unhappy with the fact that Mark, which is the very earliest of the four Gospels, didn't mention anything about the resurrection. It's so central, apparently, to Christian theology, and yet the very yeah. earliest one doesn't even mention it. And so they added these verses. So if you go to Mark now and you check it, you'll see the verses, I think, from 9 till... 19 or something like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, chapter 16 verses 9 to 20 is, is not yeah. false. The, 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 the book actually finishes at Mark chapter 16 verse 8. That's where it ends. Yeah. Mm. See, so, 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 so that, and, and that's not just Muslims saying this. That's not just like non-Muslims saying this. this is Christian uh, scholarship would also agree on this point as well. So I add that point in case you go back, try to cross check, fact check Yemeni and think, oh no, it hasn't got it mentioned but it's actually those verses are considered forgeries yeah and just add a little bit more to the bonfire um your christian scholarship don't even know who wrote the gospels they're anonymous no yeah i've heard that before i mean i guess like they're just but like mark and matthew and whatever uh no but it's they, true yeah, well, you don't even know there is, so there's no people like no lineage linked to them or what, so you, so what you do you mean anonymous sure. so you can't be sure that your gospels okay. are historical Sean, the, the names, the names of the of the, the gospel writers were given, I think, in the third or fourth century Christian era, third century, and it, third century, and oh. it was given at the uh, at the council, one of the Christian councils, where they canonized the Bible, and they said, yeah, okay, these are the Papias. Papias was the second. Century. Mentioned it, yeah. Papias yeah. was in second century, yeah. Second century, yeah. first yeah. mentioned Matthew, I think. Yeah. But this is the but, point, you see. You 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 you're reading from a book that you don't know who wrote it. There's no historical checking you can do on it. Uh, it doesn't make any theological sense. It demonstrates God is unmerciful and unjust. Uh, it, it's full of historical contradictions and internal contradictions. And it, and it goes against all the teachings of the prophets prior. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science, bro. 
So, Paul, would you like to add something? I know, I know we're waiting for an atheist to devour. Would you like to add anything? No, no. I'm just waiting for no. <laughs> okay. But if that's it, then uh, thank you, guys. I appreciate the time and uh, all the information. And uh, I hope you have a good rest of the night. Yeah, we hope to see you again soon, Sean, after you've done all your right. homework. Cool, brother. Sounds good. Take care, dude. All right. Take care. Oh, that was nice. That was nice information. That's some good information from you, Yemeni, as well, because usually that's a, a, a point that the Christians use on us. Oh, your Quran says, go to us, go to us. Mm. Why? I've heard that, like, a lot. I, and I, I actually didn't know how to respond to it, so this is good. <laughs> yeah, Yemeni just smashed it with that response. It's like he's, been, he's practiced that response and he just wanted to it's actually, the, it's actually the basis of one of the books I'm writing, so that's why. Ah, oh, mashallah. That's why he's been researching, huh? <laughs> yeah. You know, these types of, uh, what I like is uh, amongst the Dawah brothers, there's, um, there's this type of specialism. Like we do need people to be delving into these areas. Like this particular one, I've heard it for years now, but, but your Quran says to come to us, so come to us. <laughs> yeah. And uh, a decisive answer would be good. They just gave it a decisive answer. Man. I'm, the... right, I'm not sure who this guy is. I don't know if he's a Muslim or not. Are you Muslim? Hello, greetings. Greetings. Are you Muslim? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not a Muslim. No. You're not a Muslim. Okay, I'll give you uh, one minute. One second. No. Hey Google, uh, one minute timer. Your minute starts now. Make your point, argument, claim, whatever it may be. Well, I've been watching the show for quite some time now, and. Uh, yeah, I've been watching the show for quite some time now, and uh, it's it's a very good show, and it's helped me strengthen my position as well. And I re I've been searching for the way, so to speak, uh, to get into the stream. And I realized the only way to get into the stream is uh, to give up your Islam for a day or so. So. Oh, you are a Muslim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salam. <laughs> just kidding. I just <laughs> want to say that it's quite a show. <laughs> It just it's quite a show and uh, uh just want to make it quick of course uh, i mean even for the muslims themselves is it, it it clarifies bro, 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 so bro, bro, we don't bro, bro, just bro, live bro, in a bro. bubble anymore yeah, but I have, uh, anyway. I have to stop you it's, it's, it's not that kind of show it's for non muslims forgive me we just have to be uh we have to be brutal on that yeah just a just a small point um i think which is important uh, just from a purely um, mannerism point of view or just a, a general point about how Muslims should be behaving you, you can't pretend to be a non-Muslim uh, and you shouldn't lie either um, so even though you wanted to get onto the stream which is fine um, but it's, it's very important that you know you always speak the truth it's not a small thing to just pretend Someone says you're Muslim, you should say you're Muslim, unless you know someone has a gun to your head and you know you're forced to say otherwise. It is a huge thing to just say it. Oh, I'm not Muslim. Uh, is it, yeah, I just to add to that. Paper. Just to add to that, you know, Rasulullah said that a Muslim can cheat, so a Muslim can fornicate and all of that, but a Muslim cannot lie. Yeah. So it shows the the gravity of lying. Uh, it's a saying in Arabic, al uh, kith so lying is the key to every evil. Oh. Okay. Again, we're dry of guests, so it's just us. There was one guy waiting. I'll send Jello. I hope he comes back. But, um, well, so polythe what? is a guy called polytheism in the prayer. Yeah. Chat. Mm -hmm. I was interested in his argument. This is the first. Yes, it was. It was. Mm -hmm. he, he disappeared out. He disappeared out the, out the back chat. What yeah. was he saying? I mean, he was basically trying to. I don't remember. But it's something about. I'll prove that polytheism is better than theism. Mm. Well, that that would be interesting. Mm. <laughs> let's, let's hear him out. He's not there. It's not there. There's no one there. Usually, Just someone, hanging around. Yeah, usually uh, polytheists are quite. Um, Atanjalo was there, but he's left as well. I don't know why. Yeah, scary panel though. Scary panel. Where are the atheists? Where's all the? Um... 
You know, you know I've, been, I've been releasing uh, YouTube shorts every single day, baiting Christians. Yeah, every single day for the past, I'd say, two weeks mm. uh, on TikTok and here. And um, the comment section is so comical, it's unreal. The, 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 the uh, bizarre. And yet, you do a live stream and you say, challenge Islam, challenge or bring your Christian narrative. And they're nowhere to be seen. And, you know, people like David Wood, and they know about this show. They've spoken about it. Shimon knows about this show. Um, they, they know. Where, where are they? Oh, I brought one just for you, Sabor. It's like, call down the thunder, and here it is. Uh. <laughs> okay, Isan. Um, one second. Hey, Google. One minute timer. Okay. Okay, one minute, and we're starting now. I'll actually need less than one minute because um, I'm just in a little break at work, so I won't talk. But just for to say, I've started making my own videos. And uh, Sabor, I made a video on you today, and I released another one on you yesterday. So hopefully I'll be doing more of these videos um, as reactions to your streams and, and other things. So, yeah, keep up the work and just, uh, just watch out for what I produce. That okay. was the most. That was the most underwhelming entrance. I've seen okay. In the arena for the part. I was expecting normally, you to say something interesting. Yeah. But normally okay. I would say more, but I'm at work and I've just got a minute's break, so I've got to go yeah. now. Sure. Bye bye. That was really cringy. <laughs> Honestly, I, I think I'm going to start calling him Doctor Delusional instead of Doctor Google now. Doctor Delusional. Yeah. But well, at least he advertised his channel. Yeah, I mean... What, did he? What what's he called it? <laughs> Islam. You're not going to find that in. <laughs> oh, well, he's refuting you, Sabor. Yeah, yeah. Well, they try. Um, Would you hear when he said uh, Stephen Meyer's book is laughable and this, that, the other, and he said, have you read it? And he's like, well, uh, no. Then he, then he came back a day later and said, I've read it now. He said, shut up, he laughed. Yeah, the... The thing is about these people, um, there's certain points which, if they are to be intellectually honest, they would have to concede to the types of things which even atheist philosophers have. So, for example, um, design from an agency point of, being, uh, point of view being irreducible to physics. I mean, that's a point which science cannot, um, you know, undermine. There's nothing in science that can undermine that. Just yesterday, I was doing a live stream with uh, Paul Nelson, and we did two live streams on methodological naturalism and the idea that um, the explanatory filter, he goes through this, uh, William Dembski's idea of, you know, how do you, is, is something contingent or is it necessary? Is it complex? Is it specified? How do you know it's designed? The atheists usually don't even bother engaging with the first node in that filter. They don't even bother actually even thinking deeply about what's being proposed. It's, it's, it's just hand-waving, like, oh, yeah, his book's rubbish, and this guy's a creationist, and this guy believes in God, and that. And I was actually thinking about this, and I just want to put this to uh, Yemeni and Sharif and yourself, Hamza. You know, often um, they say, well, I can't take this person seriously because they're, they're a Christian or they're a Muslim. Uh, you know, this biologist or this, uh, this philosopher. Well, shouldn't we simply do the same and say well we're not going to take your guys seriously because they don't believe in god and then let's just not talk to each other because you know these guys believe in god these guys don't believe in god so we're going to stop actually reading your books and we're, we're simply going to make this conversation more symmetrical it's just so weird that they just discard someone's ideas simply because of their religious beliefs yeah, true. Look, atheists and christians in the chat don't hide in the chat your, the stream is for you guys. Um, we've got nice guys here. We won't go heavy on you much. Yeah. Um, and um, jump on. Like, for example, Damon Malpos is asking about why was Beitel Makhbis in Jerusalem on his journey if there was not a mosque. It's a good question. Bring it on. I'm not going to answer. The, we're not going to answer the chat. So you're wasting your time there. Uh, Musab Sebechi says, Hamza, brother, we've been watching your videos for a while. I'm preparing to give Dawah to my Coptic friend. Recommend which point you should start a project. Good point. Good question. Uh, I think with a Coptic Christian, forget the Bible uh, because they don't care. 
They came more about history. So I would attack Paul. From, from my, own, my own form. understanding, what is a, a what is a cop? How is a Coptic different to say a Eastern Orthodox? Or are they the same, similar sort of thing? No. So the Coptics come from the African region. Uh, the Eastern Orthodox come from the Persian region. So historically speaking, so, so Coptics only exist in Egypt then, right much. now. Yeah, well, yeah. And Egypt, Ethiopia? Part, of, part of yeah, part of Africa, Ethiopian as well. I saw some um, Coptics in Speaker's Corner once, actually, and uh, I mean th these people. <laughs> it's almost like you know the evidence is already against them because they they spoke Arabic, they knew what Islam was, um, and, and sometimes they they even pretend to be Muslim. And mm. they pretend to be ex-Muslim, rather. And they walk around and they, they try and say, I used to be Muslim. And then they start reciting Quran. And you start thinking, wow, <laughs> this guy was really an ex... But they're not. They're actually Coptic Christians yeah. from Egypt who, who, who know the Quran really well. Yeah. yeah, this is why this idea, oh, say Surah Fatiha, is redundant. It's redundant. No, that's going to recite it. it. It's redundant. They, they'll give you, well, what do you want? Do you want, uh, you know... Uh, I don't know, Mishari, do, do you want me to? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they will. In, in Egypt, what's yeah. interesting, I went to Egypt uh, a few years back. Um, it, you know, the, the Quran is within the fabric of the society. It doesn't matter whether you're religious or irreligious, Christian or, or, or Muslim. It's just like everywhere. So, yeah. I mean, do, do any of you understand this comment? Hamza is out of lucky charms. No, I'm assuming, I'm assuming I'm a leprechaun. I'm pretty sure that he's, he's saying I'm a leprechaun, <laughs> right? But okay, okay, I get that kind of. But why am I out of lucky charms? Why don't I have any lucky charms? What, 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 what possesses somebody to type that? I reckon some people. What is this mentality? What, some people watching this live stream are definitely on drugs. Uh, so it must be drugs, drunk. drunk. It's a Friday night, in it, I suppose. No, these the are people. probably the guys sat in their underpants in their basement because they've got no friends to go out and play with, so they're uh, they're just keyboard worrying it. They don't want to come on because they'll be like, "Yeah, hello, hello, not like that." And they don't want to. They want to come on, so they'll just hide in the chat. Just, you know uh, I, mean? I just want to quote mention because of you know the brother, you know, when he was asking about Dawa. I think, um, especially these days, with how the world is and. The fitna and everything. If you like, you can do that well regardless of your level of knowledge, um, as long as you understand the fundamentals. If you understand tawhid, then you can give dawa. And even if you don't know that yet, you can give dawa through your mannerisms, your character. At the end of the day, Allah said about Rasulullah that he was uh, sent to perfect a good character, right? Yeah. So, you know, don't think that because you don't have knowledge or because you're not entirely practicing, you know, or you're not that, uh, you know, or, or something rather that you can't give dawah, that you can give dawah. And in fact, it will, you, the tawheed and your, and your character are going to be the biggest things that would, inshallah, be the means for someone accepting Islam. Absolutely. Uh, and you know, Yemeni, so, uh, you, you hit upon a very interesting point about the simplicity of Dawah. A lot of people who are looking for the truth and, and are sincere, you don't need to use philosophical arguments necessarily. That, that's, you know, some segment of the, of the society. You get people who, you can teach them the most basic things about Islam and that will change their mind. So when you were speaking, I, I was reminded of a conversation I had um, with this lady who, uh, you know, she's quite well read. She, uh, she used to be a Christian. She used to, you know, sing in the church and stuff. Then um, she read Richard Dawkins' book, The God uh, Delusion. And this is when the book was like really popular. I'm talking about like 2010 and stuff. And what happened was um, at that time I hadn't read the book. Uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't too interested in that stuff and um you know she said i used to believe in god i don't believe in god anymore and then she started saying you know describing god as some sort of human thing so the only thing i could think of is 
I had an English copy of the Quran and I took it out and I gave a surah class and I said, look, you know, you described God as a human being and this and that, but this is who God is. And I just read it out and I said, you know, God's nothing like you can imagine. God is one. Just a very simple explanation of the verses. And she said, that makes sense. Like her atheism was based upon her conception of God as some giant human with a gray beard. And just the basic idea that God is nothing like his creation and nothing like a human being and nothing like you can imagine, you know, that the basic Islamic theology, it resonated with us straight away. I didn't have to give her a single argument for God's existence. So sometimes we forget the power of, of how simple the dawah can actually be. I mean, it's, it's always been simple. I always, uh, you know, advise, especially the youth, you know, when it comes to this, like, alhamdulillah, you know, so, we've been fortunate enough to be able to buy books and become well-read and and have that knowledge and you know a lot of people like they would say oh mashallah you've got a lot of knowledge and first of all we don't there's so much knowledge out there the more you gain the more you realize you don't know anything um and secondly it's a it's a responsibility you know it's uh it's a like those of us that are blessed with that knowledge we have to take care of it because there is a dua where we ask allah you know that Teach us with what will benefit us, right? Yeah. And let this knowledge be an excuse for us and not an excuse against us on that day. Yeah. Because if we have the knowledge and we don't act upon it, then it becomes, you know, useless to us. And, you know, it really demeans us um, mm -hmm. because we have less of an excuse to practice and uh, appreciate the things. But even when you go back to the time of Rasul, now, Rasul, despite, you know, obviously he had the, the wahi, but in terms of uh, his general knowledge, he probably wouldn't have had, had a lot, right? A lot of, all of it would have come from wahi. So, but look at the, the wahi that he got. Look at the arguments that he got in the Quran when it comes to Christians. Jesus and his mother used to eat food. Simple argument, right? You know, um, have, have you seen the horizons and within themselves? Right, simple thing to ponder upon. Uh, do you think that you've uh, you created yourselves, or have you been created from nothing? Again, a simple argument. So the simplicity of dawah is actually the most effective. It is. But sometimes it is. you can overload someone, like we probably did with Sean, <laughs> but um, with stuff that we that you've learned, but they have not le learned yet. And remember, yeah. Islam is meant for the scholar and the layman. Yep. And you shouldn't assume that everyone you speak to is going to be a scholar or be learned. You should assume that everyone you speak to is a layman. And what's interesting is a basic argument can work with a philosopher and can work with a, a layman. And mm -hmm. it doesn't actually matter. It's interesting you, you used uh, some uh, Quranic arguments for uh, Isa al-Islam and Marim al-Islam. Um, I was watching a video on YouTube about a, I believe she was a neurologist some sort of somebody involved in brain sciences right and she was a practicing christian she was listening to a christian radio show in america and um the guy on the um some, some muslim guy uh, or somebody on the radio was basically saying well if jesus was god why did he worship god that literally just shook her faith <laughs> and and it she, she just could not and she remember she's such an intelligent person right but that basic argument it really just made her think it doesn't make any sense how could jesus worship god if he's god and that if you like thumb screw that hole in the castle wall led her to believe jesus cannot be god and eventually led her to become muslim and then they showed the uh, in that video how she actually goes to hajj and it's, it's, it's just amazing. One one thing she heard on radio, and she changed her life. And subhanAllah, look, every time we hear about these uh, people, we always hear about how they reflect upon the verses, upon the evidence. Not just, oh, believe because it sounds nice. It's always the evidence. Uh, and subhanAllah, you know, the Quran always says about, you know, Allah always praises those who reflect, who ponder, you know. So, you know, again, it's like when, when people say, oh, Muslims are brainwashed. I'm like, we, 
we're the only religion where our people are not brainwashed because we've been taught to think. In fact, like I always say to them, like the first word revealed to us was read. Like what, what brainwashed person reads? So I need, yeah. Not only that, you have to think of it from another perspective that any religion which is firstly evangelical, evangelical not in the sense of evangelism or of christianity mm. but just preaching Pros yeah proselytizing. and two is preaching with a criteria of using your mind saying we're going to use evidence and argumentation is automatically going to be a religion that is going to have to make a rational case and defend itself against uh, a rational case yeah and the quran does that the quran asks us to invite others and to invite others with reason so we're not asking people, oh, you know, come convert to my religion because last night I saw a dream and this happened and this and that. No, no, no. So those people who, who try and claim Islam is not a rational religion, well, why would Islam, you know, overtly go out in society and try and bring people uh, within its fold? Why would it do that? And why would it use reason as a criteria for adjudicating between truth and falsehood? No um, religion, which is a blind faith religion, would be teaching those things. Very good point. We've got no guests. They're all afraid. Wow. No, we, can, we can have a chat. You know, yeah, um, just, just so you know in the chat, sorry, you Christians and atheists hiding in the chat. You don't have to show your face on the stream so your friends will point and laugh at you tomorrow. Relax. Why do you show us what you're eating? Because I, I, I'm quite... I'm really it now. <laughs> uh, it's, it's like half of um, red velvet and half oh, black yeah. forest. My so God, how can you eat something so sweet this late at night? To be honest, mm. I, want, I want a Ferrari oh. milkshake now. Oh. It's the wolf, the blue ribbon. Are they blue ribbons or blue ribboned? Look at this one. <laughs> he knows the score. Are they blue ribbons or blue, blue ribbon? Blue ribbon. I swear they used to be called blue ribbons. No, it's always blue ribbon. Is that blue a ribbon dollar effect? <laughs> if I have sugar this late, I'll just literally crash. <laughs> I just, I just well, I need sugar. I, I'll to keep me going. It's the one thing I didn't have to give up when I became a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Although after Christmas, I'm going to start um, working out and watching what I eat, reading it. But up until then, I have to enjoy all the festive kind of <laughs> special edition stuff they do. I can't, I honestly, it's got to. So come on, Christians and atheists, where are you? Nostris, you're always banging about in the lives. Come on. Bring your questions. Should we allow normal Muslims on then? Do you think mm. or not? With our questions. What do you reckon? Yeah. Why not? I don't really want to do that though, because this this arena has a reputation to keep it in the Muslims out. Or maybe should we should we start pointing and laughing at the comments in the chat then? How's that? Although yeah. I think never contradicts a person's intellect. Alhamdulillah. Hamza, nice. if you've got no literally no uh, non Muslims, then I would invite Muslims on. Mm. I think there's like you don't think we should just point and laugh at the non Muslim comments? No. Nah. Either or. We could do both even. Mm -hmm. I think Muslims would love to come on, that's why. Mm. And I think they've got questions that they would like to ask. Mm. Bro. It's a can of worms. <laughs> no, but as soon as we get non-Muslims, we just kick them off and add the non-Muslim on. We make it clear the big that as soon as we get a non-Muslim on, you're gonna oh, have so. to leave, and we'll get uh, that person on. Mm. What does that mean? What does that mean, Prabina? Oh, Hamza was on sixteen stroke eight last year. 16th of August last year. Yeah, but on what? On where? Was that your, like, arena debut? Like, you're the first arena stream? I don't know. No. no. Basically, Hamza, you've defeated them all. Mm. You think so? You think that's it? They're gone? <laughs> that's it. You defeated them all. <laughs> How long I, have you been I did an arena warm up on TikTok and ended up giving shahada to this young lad who'd become Muslim, left Islam, and then mashallah, he took a shahada again. Alhamdulillah. 
<laughs> Took his shahada when he was 16, and then, then he just hasn't been practicing, and he's like 27 now. And he thinks he's left Islam. I said, just reaffirm your shahada, mate. Just get on with it. Stop whinging. Hmm. Um, <laughs> Patrick Mc... Polis, can, can you text in the chat? Why do you want to text in the chat? Well, there we go. <laughs> this will be fun. Hello. <laughs> it's hindsight. Okay, I your minute guess. starts. One second. A hey, minute. Google. Hey, okay. Google. One second, one second, one second. One second, one second, one second, one second. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Google. One minute timer. Sure. One minute. Starting now. Okay. I was listening to you, Hamza, talk earlier about having verses to say that uh, were there any eyewitnesses to the fact. I believe you were asking for verses. Now, I found two. Would you? Uh, I would like to read them to you if I could. And you can tell me what you make of it, all right? All right, here we go. Acts 1-8. But you will receive your power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Second one was First John chapter 1, verses 1. And that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, seen with our eyes, looked upon, and have touched with our own hands concerning the word of life. Hang on. Concerning the word of life, was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you uh, the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. What do you think? Okay, first thing, you're responding to something I didn't say. What, my question was oh. this. Where, did, where do the authors of the Gospels claim to be eyewitnesses to what they say? Well, I, I thought that that pretty much covered it. No. I mean, these are two verses saying that they were eyewitnesses. Okay, you quoted Book of Acts, which is written yes. by Luke, who wasn't an eyewitness. Okay, well, <laughs> they were eyewitnesses to the resurrection, and 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 Luke John, wasn't. you know, Luke wasn't. John was there, and he said no. that Luke. we have seen with our eyes, we have looked upon him, and have touched with our own hands. Now that Luke, is about as clear. Luke, was, as you Luke, Luke wasn't an eyewitness to anything. Okay. okay. Therefore, Book of Acts doesn't help you. Okay. What about John? What does First John say? Well, it's it's saying that it, uh, what we have heard and seen with our eyes, looked upon, have touched with our own hands concerning this, the word. What, what of they God. saw. What huh? they saw. What they looked upon. What they touched with their own hands. Jesus. Where does it say that? The word of life. Jesus is Where the word. Say that? Where does what does it, what do you think that's telling you? That's telling me that they ate with him, they talked with him, okay. they they followed him around everywhere, they saw his okay. miracles, they witnessed his teachings, okay. all of that. Okay. I, say, I don't dispute the fact that Jesus had disciples who ate with him and walked with him and talked with him and Heard these parables and explanations of his parables. I've got no yeah. issues with that. Okay. So what? So what did they see? <laughs> what did they see? The, the whole point is this. Look, the authors of the Gospels were not eyewitnesses. Okay? They weren't eyewitnesses. So I'll say it again. The Gospels are nothing more than gossip. Hearsay. Secondhand information. That's why there's something in, inconsistency between them. Yeah, there is no That's divine. The there is no divine Holy Spirit inspiration because we would see the correction, we would see the harmony. We don't see it. So, what about those that believe that uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were eyewitnesses and they saw it, or they which Christian they which Christian scholars believe this? Which huh? Christian scholars believe this? There's some out there. I, I can't name them off for you. But, no, but then you'd have, mean, to ask yourself, no, but you'd have to ask yourself this, this very important question. Why okay. are you following the opinion of minority of Christian scholarship and ignoring the majority? Because being in the majority doesn't necessarily mean you're right. 
So how would you determine who is right or not then? Why, why are the minority right? I would believe some somebody that told me that I was an eyewitness. I, I would believe somebody that, that said that. And that would be John. And of course, we already know. No, that, this is uh, my question. Why do you listen to the minority of scholars who believe they know who the disciple authors of the Gospels were and ignore the majority who say they're anonymous? Why do you side with those who say they know who they were? Well, I have to also remember that, that God is in control and he handpicked these guys for a reason. Handpicked which guys? Uh, all the disciples, the apostles, uh, uh, Mark Luke. and, and uh, Luke. Mark wasn't a disciple. Luke wasn't a disciple. So yeah, but they about. knew them personally. That's almost the next best thing. Well, well, well no, what it is is not eyewitness testimony. It's secondhand information, gossip. Hmm. Okay. Well, all right. <laughs> Hindsight, can I ask you a question? You know, obviously... Yes, please. Help me. The, the idea of salvation is incredibly important. This is not... We're not talking about something which is, uh, you know, a, a small thing, yeah? No, we're, we're talking not. about something which is about our eternity. So when it comes to the issue of authenticity and preservation and ensuring the fact that what's being said is definitely being said, then surely we need to have some sort of evidence of not just like in the but really clear cut crystal understanding of who the people were who wrote the book. And those people who wrote the books, where did they get their sources from if they weren't eyewitnesses? Not just something which is speculative. Are you talking about Mark and Luke? Uh, where Matthew, did they get Mark, their information Luke. from? Who they are, who they are, you know, what was their qualification, what was the academic background, where did they live, who their fathers were, what was their lineage, where were their tribes from? Well, All they were things. obviously educated men because they were scribes and they interviewed the, uh, and probably knew them personally. We don't know that they were best friends. We don't know that. That's you the see point. What I'm That's to automatically say, that. well, they never met. They didn't know each other. It's hindsight. Just hindsight. What does Luke say? Uh, where? Where does what Luke do say he knew anybody? I'm sorry. What? Where does Luke say he was friends with these people? Well, he didn't. But I, I, he didn't say outright. Hey, what did he say? What does he guy. say? Luke says he got his information of eyewitnesses who witnessed these things 40 years ago. So his information is 40 years old. Someone, you go to somebody, imagine you go to someone who's, I don't know, 60, and ask them what happened when you were 20. And they're telling you what happened. And, you, and, you, and you've got no way of verifying it. That's what, that's what Luke did. Hindsight, hindsight. Would 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 any of these testimonial evidences would they be accepted in the court of law? So if somebody somebody gets a book, we're not too sure hundred percent who wrote it, who claims that there's a witness who saw a murder and knows who the murderer is. Well, you know that but doesn't uh, mention who Mary the witness Magdalene is. and um, Mary Magdalene, Jesus's mother, and John were most definitely there. That's three witnesses. And that would hold up in a court of law, yes. Hindsight, hindsight. You got to think about this properly. Yeah, I, I don't mean to be uh, disrespectful, by the way, by saying that. But I'm That's just trying okay. to say, just reflect, <laughs> just reflect upon this point. Just reflect upon this point. You've got somebody who wrote a book, who heard a story about a person called Mary, yeah, or Jesus, and then saying that Mary said this, Jesus said that. They didn't get it from Mary. Or Jesus, they got it from a eyewitness that's not mentioned, or eyewitnesses that have not been mentioned, written by somebody who we don't hundred percent know who wrote it. So all we have is hearsay to say that this person said this. So it's like me, like I said, it's like me finding a book, yeah, uh, or having a book with dubious author authorship that claims as an eyewitness that says that Donald Trump murdered his ex-wife. Yeah, and said that in the book it says Donald Trump said 
that I did it or whatever. Yeah. Okay, really? so you're saying really? John, who was an eyewitness there and wrote about it, was not but, being truthful? Is that what you're saying? No, I think John is not a clear cut who John is when it comes to the author of the Bible of the New Testament gospel. We don't know who well, John is. John the disciple. He was the only one that lived a full life. He had enough time to write about anything. In hindsight, according to Christian scholarship, John has three editors. Three who? Three different writers. Never heard that. Never did. I know you haven't. Well, who's going to tell you? Is that me? <laughs> Let me ask you a question because you quoted John. You quoted First John. Can you remind me what's the test of a true prophet? According to your... What's um, the test of a true prophet? The test yeah. of a true prophet is if he prophesies, it better No, no, don't true. make it up. Don't yeah. make it up. Don't make it up. That's what that's it right? is. No, it's what not. what it is. That's not what, that's not what First John says. I, okay, I want to... No, no, I'm sorry. I'm if I'm interrupting you, I'm I'm trying to get this to sink in. Stop, little one. What now? I think, I think it's first John or second. Is it first John or second John? First John chapter four. Yeah, I was gonna say, beloved, but even let me spare you. What's the test of a prophet, and how did Muhammad peace and blessing upon him fail that test? Wait a minute. Hold hold up. I'm going to. What did you say, John four? I must be in the wrong place. Can you read it to me? I'm beloved, kind of beloved believe in every spirit, but test them. For are the many false prophets sent out into the world? How shall yes. we know them by the preacher shall know them? As man cannot gather fruits from the this is all the form. A good tree will only be good fruits. A bad tree will be bad fruits. You should know them by the fruits of every true uh, spirit shall confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Okay. Does the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessed be upon him, confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh? He said Isa did. I have a question along those lines. No, does the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessed be upon him, say Jesus, son of Mary, came in the flesh or not? Okay, simple question. But they have to prophesy and they have to be. No, 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 no. Don't you make it up. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say they have to prophesize. The test of a prophet no, is you have to prophesize. That's not what a test is. Okay, we'll do that next. Okay. First thing we'll ask is this Yeah. Does the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, say that Jesus Christ came in the flesh? This is the first question. The second question is name one prophecy the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, made. It didn't come true. Talking about Muhammad? Are you talking about Muhammad? We're testing no prophets. Idea. Oh, okay, okay. We're testing prophets after Jesus. So two of the criteria you said prophecy. So name something the prophet peace and blessing said that didn't happen. Yeah? That's so you want to test prophecy? We'll do that. Um tell me, did he confess that Jesus Christ, son of Mary, the Messiah, came as a man? Did he confess to that? Did he speak of himself? Did the words he brings they remain with you forever? What does Jesus say? There are many things for you to know, but you cannot bear them now. But he shall come and bring all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but that which he hears, so shall he speak. Oh, he's referring to the Holy Spirit when he said that. Really? Yeah, remember up in the uh so, in the so, upper so, room, they waited 120 days. Oh, oh, okay, one second, one second. And they came a uh, Holy Spirit. There are many things for you to know. Tell me something the Holy Spirit taught that Jesus didn't. What the Holy Spirit taught that, that Jesus didn't? Yes. What the Holy Spirit does is sheds light on things and it gives you understanding and wisdom. When you read the word. Tell me something the Holy Spirit taught that Jesus didn't. No, he wouldn't do anything that would go against Jesus. That's no, no, true. something extra. Something extra? Believe it. Look, beloved. Oh, sorry, sorry. There are many things for you to know, but you cannot bear it now. But he shall come and bring all truth. He shall not speak of himself. But that which he hears, so shall he speak. 
Yeah. So I'm asking, tell me this all truth that the Holy Spirit came with, that Jesus didn't come with. What's the extra? All I can say is, is the Holy Spirit brought knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to the things that Jesus I'm not in platitudes. I want to hear the extra truth that he brought. And do you believe the Holy Spirit is God? Truth. Do you believe it the Holy Spirit is God? Of Jesus Christ, nobody else. I'm sorry, do you believe the Holy Spirit is God? Yeah. Okay, does God need to be told what to say? Well, he's going to say whatever the Father wants. So, he can't, so the Holy Spirit can't think for himself? Sure he can. Right, but so he needs no to be told what to the so the Holy Spirit. So according to Jesus, this one coming, using five masculines, yeah? yeah. There are, listen, listen to the words. Is, is, is the Holy Spirit masculine? Is it a man? Yes. He's it always is a man. referred to in the masculine. So he is a man? Yes. All right. Well, so, I mean, not a man. Listen, but listen I mean, to the words. Hi, sir, listen to the words. There are many things for you to know, but you cannot bear them now. But he shall come and bring all truth. He shall not speak of himself. That which he hears, so shall he speak. What does Deuteronomy 18, 18 teach? Deuteronomy 18, 18. I got to turn there. Uh, Sorry if I've derailed the conversation. You what now? I'm just talking to the brothers if I've derailed the points they were on. I say, while she's looking for it, I mean, you got to bear in mind that the... The question of the 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 verses of the Paraclete appear in, across John fourteen, John fifteen, and John sixteen, right? So you actually got to look at it all together. Hey, when says, I, go on. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go on. I was just gonna. You, you finish. I, I think fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen are made up. It says here, "I will raise up a prophet from among their brethren, among their brethren, among their brethren." Okay, that's who's the brethren? You, well, stop, stop, stop. You you said you, that three times. Who are the brethren? Uh, uh, they who would are the brethren be of the Israelites? Israel. It would, no, who are the brethren of Israel? Israel? Now, wait well, a minute. Isaac, listen to the question. No, no, no. You, you, you pondered on brethren three times if you're making a point. I'm going to show your point is useless. Okay. Who are the brethren of the Israelites? The According to your Bible. According to right? the, In this context, it's... Imagine in your context. In hindsight, who are the brethren of the Israelites? According to the Bible. Gosh, I don't know. You're going to have to tell me. Ishmaelites. Yeah, they are They are relatives. But in this particular thing, if you'll listen to it, it's it's what? talking about the Israelites. It says it? here, from among the brethren, like unto thee. Uh, well, what, 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 among the brethren, why are you, huh? why are you discounting the Ishmaelites at that point? Because it's not talking about them right now. It's saying their brethren. It's from their brethren. Who are their brethren? The Ishmaelites. I'll put my words into his mouth and he will speak unto them all that I shall command him. That is a, a reference to the Holy Spirit as well. That is what I believe. Oh, okay. If that's a reference to the Holy Spirit, why did it say we should raise them a prophet like you, Moses? It's a prophet like Moses. It's not a Holy Spirit. So now you're just making stuff up. It can't even be the Holy Spirit. No, because I'm really not. Acts, I, I swear I'm trying here. No, but, <laughs> no, but, you just, no, but the problem is, hindsight, you're not reading. It says, we shall raise to them a prophet like you. Who? Like Moses. That's not the Holy Spirit. In fact, the book of Acts even says that it even tells you that it's not the Holy Spirit because the prophecy is quoted again in Acts to refer to Jesus. So... It's not speaking, and Jesus is there, you know, being quoted as a, as a prophet, not as God. I found to something in verse 20, guys, and it says, But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. That I, I knew there was something in here somewhere that referred to, uh, you know, the difference between uh, uh, a a real prophet and then a false one hindsight please Deuteronomy 1818 refers to a prophet who's going to come who's like moses who will not speak of himself right but that which he hears so shall he speak and you know what your biggest problem is hindsight what is it you don't know who that is 
And do you know why that's a problem? Why is that a problem? Read the next verse. Uh, it says, and it shall come to pass um, that whoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I'll require it of him. So it's a con it's conditional. So yeah. you need to know who this person speaking in God's name is. And you don't know. Mm, okay. I'll concede that this was either talking about Jesus or the Holy Spirit. You believe either Jesus one. was like Moses? Jesus? Jesus was in some ways like Moses. He's the only one that saw face to face with God. He's the only one that saw God face to face. Moses did. Muhammad peace and blessing on him saw did. God face to face. Huh? Muhammad peace and blessing saw God face to face. I believe he did on, in, in the mirage. In the mirage. It's right. Wait. I don't think there was anybody else that saw him face to face. Now we believe Muhammad peace went to par went to heaven and and spoke to Allah. We we have no issue with that. Oh oh oh! I I didn't know that. I didn't know that he went face know. to face to heaven. I didn't. So know here's that. the problem you've got. The only person who is like Moses is Muhammad peace be upon him. Nobody else marries up to Moses like Muhammad. You know, there's there's um where was it um where did I read it that the only man in history? Oh yeah yeah yeah. If you I think it's the dictionary of the Bible. Uh, yeah, what's it called? The, um. The dictionary of the Bible, and in the chapter Moses, it mm -hmm. says this. So you listen to this dictionary yeah. of the Bible. Okay. The only man in history who can be remotely compared to him is the man Muhammad. The dictionary of the Bible under Moses says the only man in history who you can compare with him is Muhammad. Peace and blessing be upon him. Dictionary of the Bible says that. Wow, I didn't know that. So when God says a man like Moses, the only man in history you can compare with Moses is Muhammad Sallallahu God says this prophet will have words put in his mouth. We know the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, only spoke the words he was given from Allah. Yeah? Okay. The words he brings shall remain with you forever, which is the Quran, alhamdulillah. The all truth he brought is what the whole truth of what Islam is, guidance throughout your life for every facet, alhamdulillah. The one who confessed that Jesus came, the one who testifies to Jesus, son of Mary, existing, is Muhammad, alhamdulillah. Okay, one last question before I so, let so you the, pro so the prophecy in Deuteronomy 18, 18, the prophecy of Jesus, 1 John, it all points to Muhammad, peace and blessings. No one else can match it, nobody. Not no hocus pocus Holy Spirit. Hmm. One last question, if you don't mind, before I go. Okay, y'all y'all believe that, that Jesus was just a man, right? Just a regular guy and everything. Um, what was We believe he was a prophet of Allah, given miracles to convince the people he was who he claimed to be. Continue. Okay. What was the point of the virgin birth if he was just a regular man? It seems an awful lot of trouble to go through for him to just come. Any, old, any man could be born and done what Jesus did. Why the virgin birth? Okay. Any answers? Let me ask you a question. What's more miraculous, being born without sperm or born without an egg? Oh, good lord! It's all miraculous because it no, takes. No, you could you could fake that. You could fake being born without sperm. Mary, a stuff of Mary could pretend no one's had slept with her, but you could fake it. Yeah. Sure, but I don't think that's what's happening. No, no, but you could fake it. Either. You could fake it. Yeah. John the Baptist, his mother was barren. John the Baptist, his mother had no eggs. You can't fake that. So the more, more, more miraculous birth between John the Baptist and Jesus was John the Baptist. Because that couldn't be faked. Hmm. Okay. I, I just wondered what y'all thought from your point of view about the virgin birth and what it means and all that. That's all I wanted to know. The virgin birth. It's, it's a miracle. It's a sign. It's a sign to who Jesus was. Hmm. Well, I say it was, it was, John was the Baptist. I say John the Baptist's birth was like more miraculous because you can't fake it. Okay, who was Jesus's father? Let me ask you like that. We well, just said virgin father. birth. He didn't have a father. Couldn't it be more reasonable to say that God was his father? 
No. no. God couldn't do that. He couldn't pull that off. That's not. The, no, no, no. That's not the point. Why? Why would you? Jesus says the Father is our Father, doesn't he? Does he not say that? Yeah. He says yeah. his Father is our Father. Yes. Yeah. So there's nothing unique about Jesus calling God the Father when he says, "I go now to my God, your God, my Father, your Father." Yeah, no problem. What's the point? Well, I thought I had one. <laughs> Well, all right. I'm not going to bother you guys anymore. I see there's a couple of guests back here. So uh, thank you for talking with me. I'll be back, Hamza. <laughs> Charlotte, take your shahada. Okay. Bye-bye. Nice lady. I see. Um, I'm just going to be mouthing off. I'm going to be headed off, brothers. Wait some more. Wait some more. We might get an atheist. Is it? Hello, guys. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. G'day, guys. You're a guys. Christian. We're going to say goodbye to the board. Are you a Christian or an atheist? Uh, I am a Christian. Oh, okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, come I, on. I, don't, I normally jump on the flowers anyway, yeah, so um, I'll say salam right. to you for this. Take care. Take care. Have a good night. Okay, Hamza, I have a question. And it's in relation oh, wait, to... Wait, 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 wait. Let me set the timer. Uh, I like setting up everyone's Google. Hey, Google! One minute timer, please. All right. One minute. Starting now. Okay, here I go. So, from a person that is not a Muslim or does not come from an Arabic-speaking background, how does one interpret that the hadiths and how they are compiled, how are they then subcategorially categorized into authentic and non-authentic uh yeah that's my first question and second question um jesus says in revelation i am the alpha and the omega that is a clear title uh from the previous book in the old testament where god says the same thing so if jesus is claiming the same title as god then he must be god that's all I have. Your first question was about the hadith and how we know it's authentic or unauthentic. What, what makes something so? How do you understand the hadith with regards to authenticity and such? And what does Arabic, being a Arab, non Arab speaker, have to do with it? So, my understanding was that after the time of. Um, your prophet Muhammad, there were people that came afterwards, some somewhere from 100 to 200, from the 9th, from the 10th, up until the 13th century. And they attributed quotes that someone in the past said about what the actual, like what actions he'd done or how, what individual behaviors he displayed. Um, my, are, you I, are you serious with this line of questioning? What do you mean, as serious? A, as a Christian, are you serious about this line of questioning? Hang on. So I'm trying to understand, because the claim is from some Muslims that some hadiths can be verified and are authentic right, and right. some cannot be. So, but as a Christian, but as a Christian, are you seriously going down this road? What, what are you implying? I'm asking... A oh, oh, okay, you're asking us... How do we authenticate whether these people saw what they said they saw? Yeah, right. And as a Christian, you follow scripture that's based upon no eyewitness testimony. This is the problem you have. See, we have, let me explain it to you. So we have companions in the time of the Prophet Sassam reporting what he's seen. Yeah, this is what we have. And we have a chain of narration <clears throat> saying um, that the Prophet peace of said these things. Okay. This is what's collated and recorded. There's a test done on these claims as to who these guys were. Were they yeah. trustworthy? Were they liars? Were they there? Is there more than one chain of narration? So did more than one person say the same thing at the same event? Yeah? Sources. And we can test the veracity. Now, about the weakness of something, we can say, well, that person was losing his mind, so there's weakness in that, or that person wasn't there, or that person was a known liar, and things like okay. that. And then the other thing is we have fabricated stuff, like when the Prophet pointed at people 
play in chess and said, this is haram. Well, we know there was no such thing as chess in the time of the Prophet. So it's just completely made up. Okay. okay. So we, we, have, we, we, we have a method to, to establish. And there's books written on these narrators to see who is authentic and who is not. It's a whole science. It's like MI5. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm generally interested. Like, now, the amazing yeah. thing is, the amazing thing is, our weak hadith are a stronger evidence than your New Testament. Proof. Because the weak hadith, at least we have some idea who may have been there, potentially, whereas your New Testament is based on you don't know who wrote what. You've got no way to test the veracity of what's been written. Got no way to test the authorship and the claims and whether these people knew what they were talking about, whether these eyewitnesses that spoke to Luke hadn't lost their mind, had, weren't mistaken, weren't lying. You have no way of doing this. Whereas we have a, a way of testing the veracity of what the Prophet Muhammad said and did and his actions and such. We have a way of going back to the Prophet, peace and blessings him. We have people who lived in Medina with the Prophet or going through generations to today. To, to know the actions of the people of Medina based upon the prophet, peace and blessings upon him. You can't do history if you are so skeptical about what we have. You can't do history. You can't know Harold got hit in the eye at the Battle of Hastings. You can't know this. How do you know he got hit in the eye at the Battle of Hastings? What, because someone put it on a tapestry? Yeah, I, I see your point, Hamza. I see your so, point. so what happens is this. You, with the skepticism, have to throw history away. And, and included in that is your New Testament and your Old Testament. You can't verify any of it. So it's, it's a very strange argument for a Christian to go down. My response is, but we have gospel accounts and we have complete, uh, like the sign, uh, the Vaticanus. Uh, Who wrote the gospels? The gospels were written by the disciples and they were also... No, they weren't. How, why do you believe the disciples wrote proof? the gospel? Why do you believe the disciples wrote the gospels? Because the disciples collaborated with other eyewitness and people that made testimonies. You're just making stuff up. Why would the disciples need to collaborate with other witnesses if they were witnesses walking with Jesus? Because it was a community in the first century AD. Uh, there were communities established throughout who, then the Roman Empire. Was Mark a of Jesus? Was Mark a disciple of Jesus? Uh, no. Right. So Mark's not a disciple of Jesus. It was Matthew? Uh, I believe so. Why is he copying from Mark? Because they they were a community of first century, second temple. No, but Mark wasn't there. What, what, why is Matthew, a disciple of Jesus, asking Mark what happened? Sorry, what do, what do you mean Mark wasn't there? Mark wasn't a disciple of Jesus. No, but Mark was a disciple. Hang on, I'm trying to get my sources up. Mark was an assistant, I believe, of... An um, assistant. So Mark yeah. was an assistant of a disciple, and yet a disciple needs to copy from the assistant of a disciple rather than the disciple writing for himself. Why? I might have to get back to you on that, Hamza. I'll, right. I'll, take, that. I'll take that on notice. Good man. Okay, Yemeni. Oh, okay. Um, I completely forgot what I was going to say, actually. Uh, yeah, I completely well, you, uh, Yeah, while well, you're not thinking, have you thought, have you remembered it? Sorry. No, I was going to, I was actually going to end up saying the same thing as Hamza did about the hadith. Uh, what was your other question? Because my second, say my yeah. second question is that in relevant, <clears throat> in revelations, Jesus says that he is the alpha and the right. omega. Yeah, 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 I remember now. So, uh, thanks. Uh, actually, if you study hermeneutics of uh, the book of Revelation, you would actually see that it's uh, Jesus quoting what the Father is saying. Whether it's in Revelation 1 8 or 1 18, um, you would see that it's actually um, the Father speaking, uh, especially in Revelation 1 8, because it's very, it sort of molds together. You have the angel speaking, you have Jesus, uh, Jesus speaking. <clears throat> and you have the father speaking so you have all three speaking and it's really hard to distinguish between uh who's saying what so if you actually study hermeneutics on that uh, on from verses uh four to eight in revelation one uh you actually realize who's saying what um yeah it's, it's that simple really 
But it's Why do you believe what the book of Revelation says? Sorry, Hamza? Why do you believe what the book of Revelation says? Because it's canonical scripture of the Christian church, of the early Christian church. Why does that make it true? Well, I suppose it's a uh, question of faith, I suppose. Um, so you so blindly believe it? I don't blindly believe in it, but I look at... So why do you believe it then? Okay, give me the reasons for believing it then. Well, it's not Hamza, the same question can be posed to your belief system. Yeah, yeah, do so. Do so. That's what we're here for. What, what, what question can you pose for my beliefs? Why do you believe that Muhammad was the final messenger according to Islamic script, uh, scripture? How, how did he fulfill any prophethood in terms of his acts and how he lived? Okay, so his prophethood fulfilled the prophecies in the New Testament. Yeah. Where's your evidence? Uh, Which okay, prophecies did, of the New oh, Testament? Let me repeat myself. Did the prophet Muhammad, peace, peace and blessing be upon him, confess Jesus Christ came as, in, as a man? Um, according yes. to your scriptures, yes, he did. No, according to what the prophet did. did. Did he preach that or not? Did he teach that or not? Did he teach Jesus came as a man or not? He did, according to your scriptures. Right, so that's a test of a true prophet, according to your scripture. Okay. So name a prophet after Jesus that taught that. There were no prophets after Jesus. Well, that's not what it says in your Bible, mate. It says test the prophets. That means there's more prophets coming. Why would you test the prophets if there's no prophets after Jesus? Where does it say test the prophets? First John 4. Just bring it up, First John. One second. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Okay, so spirit and prophet is now synonymous. Yeah, test the spirits, test the prophet. Depending okay. on the translation, agreed. What, what do you mean, depending on which translation? Well, the translation from the written English and the translations from the the uh, Queen Greek and the and the Hebrew. What language do you read the Bible, mate? I read it in English because I'm an English speaker. So why all of a sudden are you trying to switch to Greek? Because you have to understand the context of the words and... But you don't understand they... the rest of the Bible in context. Well, I understand the message and I understand... No, you don't. You, 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 don't. You, you read what you want to read in English and understand it as you want to understand it. And then all of a sudden, when there's something that questions your narrative, all of a sudden now we need to go to Greek. Let's well, go to let's, Greek. Let's, let's go okay. to Greek. Let, let's go to Greek. When Jesus says, I and the Father are one, what does Jesus mean? It means that Jesus is confirming that he is God. Really? What does the word "as" mean in Greek? Oh, uh, mate, I'm going to have to go to a dictionary. Um, well, you just wanted to go to a dictionary on the other verse, so why are you not going to it now? If well, you give it, me some time, I'll pull it up. In the Greek, it's, uh, you know, the word for prophet is prophetess. It's and AS means whenever you see AS, which means one, it means one in purpose. It doesn't mean one in essence. Mm. The Father and I are one. John no, the Greek. They read the Greek. Yeah, yeah. Parallel verses in the New Standard. Uh, New American Standard, I and the Father are one. The King James Bible, I and my oh, Greek. You said Greek. You said you were going to the Greek. Go to the Greek. Go to the Koyin Greek that you were trying to go to with the other verse. Oh, look, I'm not a scholarly... I'm, I'm, I'm not a scholar of Koine Greek. Oh, if you go to... We just, we just quoted you a verse in the First John 4 and you wanted to clamber into the Koyin Greek. Now all of a sudden we're telling you to go to Koyin Greek in a, in a clear verse and you're ignoring it. If you type in, uh, you know, the verse that you want and just add interlinear, you'll you'll get the Greek and the, you know, understanding of the word and the understanding of the word. Yeah. Do, do you know what syntactical syntactical uh, ambiguity ambiguous statement is? Sentences. I, I have very very limited knowledge, but I have I have heard of like the scholarly biblical. No no no. This is a principle of reading now. Do you right. know what a syntactical ambiguity is? Uh, no. So basically, it, it, it's a sentence that could be more than one thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree. So I'll, I'll give you a stupid example of it. The murder weapon was found by the statue in the park. How could you understand that sentence? Uh, there's a clear, like, a, there's a clear item, like, in a clear place at a clear time. That's, that's how my take on how you've just... No, there's two ways you can understand that. The murder weapon was found in the park next to the statue, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Or the statue found the murder weapon in the park. Yeah? Yeah. But on which one of those would be true? Probably the first one. Obviously, because statue doesn't, can't do that, right? <laughs> yeah? So what you have to do is, with a syntactical ambiguity, ambiguity, when you read a sentence, you see, is this one of those things? Now, I and the father are one is one of these things, because it could mean more than one thing. It could mean that they're one in one essence, or it could mean they're one in one purpose. Or it could mm -hmm. mean one will, if you like. So now we have two choices of which, what it could possibly mean. How okay. would you determine which is true? Well, given that Jesus himself says that he and God are one in multiple uh, verses throughout the New Testament. He, he, he doesn't. He doesn't. See, here's the problem, you see. Every time you say Jesus and says him and God are one, him and the Father are one, they're all syntactical ambiguities. All of them. Even uh, John. What Abraham was, I am, is another one. It could mean more than one thing. Yeah? So, but there's explicit statements. Now, an explicit statement is when it can only mean one thing. So, I'll give you an example. Okay. Um Jesus says the only true God is the Father. It can't mean anything else. Jesus says the only true God is the Father. Can that mean anything else? Well, God being the true... Well, Jesus said my God is the only true God. No, Jesus says the Father is the only true God. Now, could that mean anything else? It means God is the Father. It means That's the only true God is the Father. Correct. Couldn't mean anything else. Which makes Jesus the Son. Okay. <laughs> but if the only true God is the Father, that means there's only one true God, which is the Father. It can't mean anything else. So when you see a syntactical ambiguity now in another sentence, which implies Jesus might be God, you remember the explicit verse. Well, actually, Jesus said the Father is the only true God, so it can't mean that. So I'll give you an example now. So when we come to the I and the Father are one, and we've got yeah. two choices, one in essence, one in um, purpose, Go to the Greek. The Greek word is aeus. One. Aeus. Aeus always means one in purpose. It does never mean one in essence in Greek. Yep. So, so we're going, we, going back. So now to we have a choice. It seems, it looks like Jesus is not saying he's one with God as in together with God. He's basically right. saying, yeah, what God says, I say. Well, so what I say, God says, basically. We're, we're, we're together. God sent me effectively. So, and the reason we know that is Andrew, true. Please let me reply. One second, one second. Let me finish it off. Jesus okay. says to his disciples, you can be one with us using the same word. Yep. So we have Jesus saying he and the Father are one and the disciples will be one with them. Mm -hmm. And we have this fantastical ambiguity with regards, is, is, is Jesus saying he is God, part of God? Or is he saying he is, you know, him and the Father are one thing? Or is he saying we've got the same role, we've got the same purpose, we've got the same will, we've got the same mm -hmm. mission, if you like? Okay. However... My, the thing that I don't understand in regards to, hello, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Hello. Ah, oh, there we go. I mean, given that there are the quotes according, okay, fair enough. We, we can put the topic of the, uh, what Jesus said, um, given that according to you, Hamza, that the, the testimonies and eyewitness accounts are unreliable. But if we go back to like the events that are occurring at the time of John, the Pharisees and the Jews are actively trying to either harm him because he is claiming. Why? Why are the Pharisees he, trying to harm Jesus? Because he is claiming, according to their Judaic law, blasph blasphemy. Blasphemy. Why? Me. What's Jesus saying so blasphemous to them? He is saying that him and God are one. No, he's not. So when so when he's put before the Pharisees... Well, why do you keep saying Pharisees? Why do you think the Pharisees were against Jesus? For what purpose? What did Jesus teach that the Pharisees were against? Well, according to the Pharisees, Jesus would have been preaching a heretical, unorthodox, rabbinistic Jewish... Why? 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 What did he teach that was so unorthodox? Well, he, he's 
I mean, he's teaching a first century, you know, Judaic heretical. Sense. What's he teaching? What's he teaching? What's, what's he teaching that's so heretical that the Pharisees would have a problem with? Well, clearly he's claiming that he and God are one, so they want to execute He's not him. claiming that. Okay, so what is he, so what is Jesus, what did Jesus then, according to your narrative, how, I mean, Jesus, according to the Islamic narrative, wasn't even crucified to begin with. Um, so, I mean, we have eyewitness accounts, we have Josephus. And other well, Josephus, no, 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 please, please. Josephus wasn't an eyewitness. No, but he was a historian in the... He was a first... historian reporting what people... Okay, <sighs> this is, this is, like, honestly. Right, so hey, Josephus was a historian reporting what the people believed, yes? Right, but hang on, going back to the my original argument about the events that are occurring at the time in the no, first no, no, century... No, 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 we're going back to... I'm, I'm questioning the events of the time. I'm challenging okay. the historical... Um, what's the word? Ver veracity of, okay. of what the New Testament is claiming. See, right. I'll give you an example. I'll give you one example. I've used this example recently, but let me see how you respond to it. Mm -hmm. Did the Pharisees have a problem with Jesus healing on the Sabbath? Oh, man, I'm going to have to... I'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> well, according to the New Testament, yes, they did, because they sought to kill him for it. Yep. That, that, that seems reasonable. Historically, did the Pharisees have a problem with healing on the Sabbath? Um, no. 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 It, it's compulsory to heal, uh, to, 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 to uh, save a life on the Sabbath. If someone's dying on the Sabbath, it's compulsory to save that life. I'll according have to, to find that source. The Pharisees it sounds reasonable. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, it's recommended to heal somebody on the Sabbath. Yeah? So you, it's something you can do. So according to the Pharisees, you can heal on the Sabbath. It's an issue. But the New Testament is saying, oh, the Pharisees sought to kill him for this thing. But well, this is a teaching of the Pharisees to do such a thing. Okay. If the Pharisees were so against Jesus, why did they warn him when he was going to be arrested? Why did they warn him? Are you talking about the in the garden of... Yeah, uh, yeah. Why did they come to warn him, saying they're coming to arrest you? Why? If they were against him. Well... I'll have to assume that there were some sympathetic um, Jews to Jesus that would forewarn him of this, of what was... Why would the Pharisees him? warn Jesus if they were so against his teachings? I wouldn't put it the Pharisees directly informed Jesus, but... But the I Pharisees guess. did. But the Pharisees did warn him. And why did the Pharisees petition the Sanhedrin for the release of his disciples? Say that again, sorry? Why did the Pharisees... Petition the Sanhedrin for the release of Peter and the disciples. Why? If before, they were so against Jesus and what he taught. Before or after the crucifixion? After, after. Um, I'm just writing that down. Look, Hamza, I, I'm no scholar or, you know, I, I'm just. I know, a, I know, not, I'm a, look, I know this I is just, new information. I know this yeah, is new information. information. We've got to digest it because you're coming from a position which is mm -hmm. incorrect. Because once you realize the Pharisees. To be honest with you, from what I've read and what I've seen what Jesus taught in the New Testament, I think Jesus was a Pharisee. Because what he does is what the Pharisees do. Yeah? He, he doesn't go against the Pharisee teachings. He actually behaves like one. Now, the irony of ironies, you know what the irony of ironies is? I've said this earlier as well. <laughs> go on. Paul couldn't have been a Pharisee. How come? Because he went to the high priest, yeah, to petition to arrest the followers of Jesus. And the high priest was a Sadducee. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees hated each other. The Sadducees were representations of Rome. The Pharisees wanted the removal of Rome. Yeah? There were yeah. two different entities. The Pharisees were waiting for the Messiah. The Sadducees were against the idea of a Messiah because the Messiah claimed to be the king of, Jew of, of the Jews, basically. And yeah. the Romans abolished Jewish monarchy in Jerusalem, in Judea. And the, because the Sadducees after, yeah. were representing Rome, Anyone claiming to be the Messiah needed to go because you're claiming authority over Judea, which the Romans rule. Yeah. yeah. So the idea that um, the Pharisees had a problem, they were, waiting, they were waiting for the Messiah to go and prove you're the Messiah. Do, do the stuff the Messiah is supposed to do. Go on the mountain, do your stuff. Call God down, whatever. Yeah. That's, this is, what, this that, is what they said. Christian account of the Messiah, which is Jesus. So No, no, no. 
The Jews, the Pharisees, were waiting for a Messiah. They were promised a Messiah. They were waiting for him to get rid of the bloody Romans. That's what they were there for. That's what they, the, the Sadducees hated the idea of the Messiah. The Pharisees loved the idea of a Messiah. So the Pharisees would have no problem with anyone claiming to be a Messiah. No problem whatsoever. Are you the one? Let's see. Yeah? The Sadducees, you're an enemy. So the idea that Paul was a Pharisee going to the Sadducees to work with them to go and hunt Christians in Damascus when the high priest had no authority in Damascus is just complete false historical narrative. And so then he wasn't on the road to Damascus. It's just all fire. It's all black. It's literally all black. Why would a Pharisee go to a Sadducee to get authority to hunt Christians in Damascus where the high priest had no authority? Why? How? It's very interesting, Hamza. I'll give you that. Um, I'd like to continue this maybe next weekend, and um, I'll write down all those points. And Good man. But let some of the other boys, they can take you on the lighter stuff. I, I went heavy on you, man. I just wanted to test that, <laughs> go test that stuff I've been learning. But anyway, go on, continue. Um, I just, from a, what's the word I'm looking for? It seems, and looking at from outside of religion, it seems that Islam has one narrative about Jesus and Christianity has one narrative of Jesus. And when you get to the bottom of it all, like you said, you brought up some of these points in relation to um, uh, uh, Paul. Um, we know that Paul lived after Jesus, like crucifixion. But the problem for me with regards to the like Islamic narrative about Jesus was... My, my understanding is that Muhammad, who was around like the Hejaz in Mecca, he would have like he would have met Christians in his younger years when he was a merchant, if I'm not mistaken. I believe he was a merchant before, according to the Islamic tradition, he received the revelation. At the time of Muhammad being alive, there would have been Christian communities throughout the Middle East. So... And at the time of those Christian communities being there, they would have already had a gospel or an Injil. So what I can't fathom, like looking at it from the outside, and I'm happy if, Hamza, if you want to interject and tell me otherwise, how come the Bible is saying that Jesus was crucified and the Quran is saying that he was not crucified, but it was made to appear to them? <sighs> Just very, very quickly, and then I'm gonna let you the boys. Yeah, mate, yeah, like I'm what just does the Quran say? What does the Quran say? Um, I'll have to pull it up. But right, I'll I tell know. you. The Quran says the people believed he was crucified, yeah? Yeah. Okay, what does history say? I I believe history says that Jesus was crucified. No, no, no. The history no, the historian just reports what the people say. So the historians report the people believed he was crucified. The Quran says the people believed he was crucified. History confirms the Quran. I don't see what the point. No, I say that again slowly. I'll say it again slowly. Please, please, please. <laughs> the Quran says that they didn't kill or crucify him, but they believed that he had been crucified. So they didn't do it, but they believed they had. Now, when people believe they've done something, they tell people we did this thing and that gets reported. And then historians report what the people are saying. So they believed he was crucified. Historians report he was crucified. The Quran confirms history. If this is the irony, if there was no crucifixion in the New Testament, the Quran could be questioned as to why is it talking about crucifixion that there's no mention of in history. Yeah, the, the, there has to be a um, people believing of a crucifixion for the Quran to be correct on the matter. And so the Quran says they thought he was crucified. They took, they, they're telling people he was crucified. Historians reported that he was crucified. And like I said, the historians just confirm what the Quran says. They thought he was crucified. So, according to Islam, God inter like God spoke in regards to the actual events that occurred at the time. Okay, the I'll make it easy for you. A lot in the Quran says that the Jews in boast say they killed Jesus, son of Mary. Okay, and then Allah says they killed him not; they crucified him not, but we lifted it, we raised him to us. Yeah, and mm -hmm. all those who differ are all in conjecture. So basically, Allah is saying the Jews are claiming they did this, that, the other. They did nothing. They just thought they did. 
That's that's what Allah says. What we say we we brought into us. How that so, happened, we don't know. Allah says whoever's guessing how it happened, substitution, swoon, whatever, it, it doesn't really matter. The point is this: he wasn't killed or crucified. And the amazing thing is, you see, in this verse, it's not even addressing the Christian. It's not even not even a, a giving you any attention at all. It's telling the Jews you did nothing. You killed him, not you crucified him, not. So the Quran saying that, but you thought you did. And so because they thought they did, they were saying they did. And because they were saying they did, the historians are reporting that they did. And that's how history confirms what the Quran is saying. At the same time, there were Christians at the time, we've already had this conversation earlier, who didn't believe Jesus was crucified. There were some who believed Simon of Cyrene was crucified. There were some that believed Judas Iscariot was crucified. Mm -hmm. there were, there, it, wasn't, it wasn't like some everybody agreed that Jesus was crucified. There were Christians that were not believing that who were killed, who were massacred. Yeah. Heretical sex, yeah. No, no. They were only heretical based upon the ones who claimed to be the Orthodox. Why were they heretical? Why, why, why are they heretical claiming it was Simon of Cyrene? Why are the, Basil why are the Basilidans uh, heretical for making that claim? Simon of Cyrene carried the cross. Why wouldn't he? Why, would he? why didn't he go up? What I'm saying to you is this. It's not a Muslim idea. It's a Christian idea. But That's those easy. Christians were suppressed and murdered by those who disagreed. Can't go so anything about that. That's your Christian history. It's a Christian idea. What is this? Yeah. It's not a Muslim Pro, it's not a Muslim uh, invention. It's a Christian thing. Well, there you go. <laughs> anyway, Hamza. Um, dude, before you go. Man. Dude, before Sorry. you go. I was going to say, so <laughs> there's a lot of things I want to say, but I think it's been covered and moved on anyway. But just on this point, this particular point, though, um, do you see this as a, as a stumbling block as understanding Islam is being true? Sorry, you broke up there in the last part. I was going to say, stumbling. do you see this? Do you see this point that you raised? This point at the end you raised as an obstacle for Islam being true. Uh, yes. And so, what you're basically saying is, the reason why Islam is not true is because it gets a historical fact it, mis mistaken. Is that is that your argument, or is your yeah, argument? That, that, the Quran is not true because it contradicts what the New Testament says. Um, both. That's my position. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> how how certain are you about the historical fact, irrespective of what the New Testament says? So, if you didn't have the New Testament, how what evidence would you have in terms of the fact that Jesus was uh, crucified? So, I go... So, my basis for believing that Jesus was crucified was that gen most New Testament scholars who are either Christian or atheist or ag agnostics confirm that the evidence supports the theory that Jesus was crucified and a sect of first century Judaism, which would later became what the church today, like came up came after that that's what i believe through what evidence that i have read so mo Which, mo are you talking about modern scholars modern christian scholars you know uh, scholars of christian correct. history Bart Ehrman, yep. how 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 certain do you think these guys are when they're reconstructing the past well i i like to think that people that invest a lot of their time and money into a subject that they're absolutely you know they're passionate about you i would go to a doctor because for the same similar reasons he has a passion and he has uh, avid interest into what he likes to do and you know like why 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 do you people go to scholars why do okay yeah but like, dude, you go to the doctor? Think, sorry just sorry really quick but dude oh. the point being is this is that when when historians think on the secular side when they talk mm -hmm. about history, they never talk about it in absolute terms. They never talk about uncertainty. They talk about what the potential evidence points to, but they never talk about it as being 100% certain. And they certainly don't talk about the idea of Jesus' crucifixion as being 100% certain. They just say, of the available evidence, of the available data, it seems to point to this. Which, to me, is sufficient. Right, That's so that's sufficient for that, you. That's, that's, that's so for now, me. So, so right, so now do so. The point here is this: is that it can't be it can't be said that it's a historical fact. This is the issue. 
can't be said to be a historical fact. Yeah. Mm. What it can be, you could potentially say, is there are some indicators to indicate this occurred. Yeah. I mean, that's the problem with history, I suppose. Like, we can't... Right, yeah, the problem with history, agreed. So, one of the problems... So, the so the issue then becomes, for me, as a Muslim, would I reject mm -hmm. Islam because some historians analyse some of a limited set of evidence and a limited set of data and come to a conjectural position upon what they think is the preponderant position? Not a certain position, just the preponderant position... Would that be sufficient for me now to say, okay, the Quran must be wrong? Hmm. Because for me, yeah. okay, the I understand. Is that I, I, have, understand. I have, yeah, I have independent reasons as to why I believe the Quran is the word of God. So I'm now thinking, okay, the Quran is the word of God. God has said this is the actual state of affairs, and because God is all knowing, He knows past, present, and future. He's able to accurately tell me exactly what happened, not the preponderance of reconstructing a past by modern day scholars 2000 years after the event. Yeah. But rather, mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, God, who is present and knowledgeable and knows everything, would be the accurate explanation of what actually occurred. So if I've got good reasons for, for the Quran being the word of God, then even if the preponderance of the evidence points to Jesus being crucified, that good reasons would supersede the preponderance of the evidence. That's what I'm evidence. trying to explain. Yeah? yeah? No, I'm following. Makes sense. Okay. So, so, I, so I'm just saying is that to me, your argument is not a good argument. It's not going to destroy Islam. Because what you're doing is you're taking something which is indefinite, and you're trying to present it as though it's a clear-cut case where the Qur'an has contradicted something which is an indefinite conclusion. Okay, beautiful. Right, okay. So it's, it's a bad argument. Don't use it. Until otherwise, I mean, I, I'm still going to hold if you got, to that belief. and Dude, you can hold to that belief. I'm dude. saying it's about the argument. If your argument is going to be to say, look, I have a belief based upon some preponderance of evidence that says this may have occurred or is likely to have occurred, then I can't use that as a way to denounce the Quran's narrative because there are two different epistemic standards we're using. Saying that the Quran is true because it historically conforms to or oh, it, it conforms to the preponderant evidence of X, of history. history We're yeah. saying we've got independent reasons for believing the Quran is the word of God, word of the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If those independent reasons stand up, then there is no contradiction. Yeah, it's not a true contradiction to now say that we take the Quran over any historical evidence that is indefinite in its conclusion about what happened to Jesus. You'd have yeah. to take what is certain. It's an argument from authority, though. That's, that's the issue with it. What's that? My, so my main, my main argument, I suppose, is that Muslims and Islam claim from a. Uh, it's, it comes from a, a point of argument like that. It's divine, so therefore, if it's divine, it has to be true according to the Muslims. But yeah, and you're we saying... have the we have the other evidence though that supports the fact that the crucifixion did happen. What like, evidence? I know we're going around well, circles well, a little bit, but dude, it's not about what true. What evidence is a good question, but it's about the level of that evidence. That's the issue, because if the level of the evidence that you're pointing to is indefinite, then what you're basically saying is that oh, okay, it's belief in the Quran. And you have this particular methodology that you've established that it's divine. But what you're trying to say is that it's, it's a true contradiction. The Quran is affirming something which is absolutely false. But you can't say it's absolutely false. Because you can say it's potentially false, but there's a doubt within there. So it's not a, so it's not a true contradiction. Do you understand the point that I'm trying to say? If, look, if the yeah. Quran... If, 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 for example... 
uh, a belief system says that uh, you know the moon is made of cheese, as an example, yeah, yeah, and then you'd be like, well, that's just completely false, yeah. You'd say, yeah, I can deny, I can deny it. This is something that's claiming something which is absolutely false. But if somebody turns around and says, oh, this religious belief system says, for instance, that the universe is actually 12 billion years old instead of 13.78 billion years old, then I can't say, well, I can deny this religious belief because it makes this claim, because it's not a certain claim now. The, cert the certainty of the universe being 13.78 billion years old is not definite, it's preponderant. So if you know, I've got a belief system that contradicts something that's preponderant, it doesn't necessitate that the belief system is false. So in the same way, if you have a preponderant you know, argument for Jesus is being crucified, and then you have a belief system that says it's not, then you can't just simply say, well, because my preponderant belief system, you know, I think is correct, but there's a possibility of it being wrong. Therefore, I'm going to deny this belief system. That's not the way you'd start off, start off your investigation of the Quran or of Islam being true. I would add to this as well, because look, if you think mm -hmm. about it, the Quran gives you a falsification test, right? Especially for a non-Arab, non-Muslim, right? It says, if you doubt that this book is from God, surely you'll find within it errors and contradictions. Yep. Now, for a man, if let's say, let's say you believe that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the author of the Quran, right? Uh, or any man for that matter, right? For a person in the seventh century to make such a bold falsification test and then turn around and deny something that has been spoken about or believed for 600 years is quite weird, right? Mm -hmm. And I would go even further because chapter four, verse 157 actually affirms the history while also clarifying what actually happened right because it's in the new testament that the jews wanted him dead and that they were boasting and mocking about him right and then it says he was he was in the uh when he says he was neither killed nor crucified but he was made to appear so as hamza said there were first century christians that believed this right the basilidians and uh uh <coughs> what's the other group the the Ebionites, right as well and, and other gnostic groups right yeah um, as well as the exegesis that reached the people in the 7th century came from Judeo-Christian sources. So for 600 years, people have been telling this story, you know, that there was a substitution or the, um, the substitution theory. What's the other theory? I can't remember what it's called. But um, so that story's been there for 600 years. So uh, which is interesting because the Quran then goes to say, well, those who differ are in doubt. Well, that, that's historically correct. There was a difference of opinion, even amongst the Jews who were boasting. Because if you read the Talmud, you will see there's three different ways that, that they report Jesus was killed. One of them is crucifixion. The other one was buried alive, you know, with just his head above the thing and left to die. And the third one was hanging. Three completely different methods. They're not even remotely similar. So even the Jews that themselves boasted had different opinions. And Allah says that, that there was other ones with conjecture. They don't know what happened. And then he affirms the reality that they did not do anything to him. Hence the conjecture. So those 34 words in that verse confirm the history that we know, right? That, that, you has, know. that has come to us whilst also clarifying the reality. So as well you... as filling this falsification test that there is no error here because yeah. it's all affirmed. So Point dude, to just to help summarize for you, just to help summarize for you, Firstly, you acknowledge that the evidence is that le that concludes the fact that Jesus was killed on a, on a cross is not definite. You agree upon that, yeah? It's not definite. And that the scholars who follow that position... It's not definite. Yeah, it's not definite. It's just a preponderance. What do you mean by not definite? Because the historical evidence, it's not a historical fact. You can't turn around and say it's like the sun exists in the sky, yeah? It's not that level of evidence, is it? If, it's highly, if somebody, highly evident. No, well, it's, it's not. not well, it's not, not even. Right, this is the point. If firstly, it's it's not definite. Oh. Yeah, it's based upon the preponderance of what some historians have looked at. That's that's first. So it's not definite. It's not based. But it's based upon preponderance. 
Secondly, is what Yemeni has also, also already mentioned, which is actually different Christian groups had different theories at the beginning point of Christianity as well. So it wasn't the case that every Christian believed this particular position, even though Unitarian Christians today, they believe this is the most essential doctrine of Christianity. This would be like Muslims who don't believe in oneness of God. Yeah, this is how important it is to a Christian. And the other point, which is what Hamza brought up earlier, which is about the actual hist historicity of the evidences that we have, whether it's the New Testament and its authorship or the claims of the eyewitnesses, there are severe doubts. In fact, Just if you use. look at the evidences, the problem that you have with regards to the evidences is that there are very lax evidences that actually demonstrate he was crucified anyway. The only evidence, dude, you can bring up is the fact that historically the majority of Christians have accepted his, uh, uh, accepted Jesus was crucified. Yeah, that's the only evidence that you can give. Now, historically, yeah. just simply saying that the majority of Christians, and we talk when we talk about majority of Christians, we're talking about probably about second and third century onwards, where we're yeah. talking about this. Yeah, so we're talking about from that period onwards. So you know, it's not. It's not a good argument to say, okay, Jesus was definitely crucified. Yeah, it's, it's the the evidence is not strong enough. Yeah, even to say According it's to ponderant in that situation. We've just got, like uh, Yemeni's mentioned pre previously, we've got the of the enemies of Jesus who were who were uh, uh, boasting about the the killing and the crucifixion of Jesus. Yeah, and then that became normative amongst christian followers later on even though some christians denied it yeah and the actual direct historical evidence whether that's first-hand eyewitness accounts whether that's historical archival accounts which we don't have none of which actually support that particular narrative all we have is that it was a standard doctrine yeah or orthodox doctrine from the second and third century onwards By people okay. who were not eyewitnesses. Sorry, Hamza. So what 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 he's saying is is, is the majority opinion uh, in the second century by people who didn't witness it. So it's just a belief. I disagree, and that's where we are. <laughs> well, here's, here's, no, no, here's where we are. Here's where your we belief are. is no more than delusion, because right. you're believing something to be true despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. You know what it is, dude? Do you know what I don't understand this? Look, go on. The reason why I give the example, I explain the point at the beginning, which was that look, you've got the Quran that says certain things, you've got history or certain scholars of history that say something else. The scholars of history agree that what they conclude is not definite. So, but you're saying, well, I'm still going to take the, what they're saying above the Quran. But let me give you something else. The whole idea of the Trinity is illogical. It's a contradiction, no, a true a totally contradiction. Different topic. Yeah. No, but no, the, the, the issue is the same. The reason why I say the issue is the same is because if you're saying that Islam is incorrect because it makes a statement which is factually incorrect, yeah? Yes. And we've shown you that's not the case. But if you're saying that's how you discount a, a message that claims to be a religious uh, belief system uh, from God, then you have a message within, in, within Christianity which has a belief system which is factually incorrect because it believes in a true contradiction. The true contradiction being what? obviously the idea of the logical problem of the Trinity. Uh, You're aware are we, of are we, are we going on to Trinity? Is, is this... let, let's, just, let's just keep, let me just keep slapping the crucifixion. When okay. God says he hears your prayer, what does he mean? God sees and hears our prayer. When God says he hears your prayer, what does it mean? I believe it's when I speak. I have a personal relationship, and oh, just make stuff up. Stop making stuff up, please. Go biblical. <laughs> whenever, whenever I say something about Christianity, where's that in the Bible? As soon as I ask a Christian a question, you start asking, making your own stuff up. Read the Bible, man. When God what hears your it prayer, say? it means He answers it. What does it say? It says God answered your prayer. So when Jesus prayed to be saved from the cross, God heard His prayer. In which chapter? I'll get my Bible out. I can't do the work for you. Yeah, I mean, do you know how to have the actual uh, verse where it says God heard his prayer? Um, 
I'll believe it's a Matthew. Oh, look, religion aside, guys, I've actually really enjoyed this. Um, look, I'm open to, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are maybe others that might want to uh, jump on, but I'm happy to stay if you guys are. Okay, one second, one second. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Which book? Uh, book of Hebrews, 5 7. Going to Hebrews. So Jesus prayed not to die, and God heard his prayer. Ta da! See? Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, look, I'll write I mean, that I could ask down you, I could, I could even make this worse for you by asking you, why did Jesus have to die? Well, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> well, the belief of... Because uh, <laughs> that will just destroy your of according... atonement and all that business. Yes, yes, that's another conversation. Dude, I think, I think obviously, we've gone through a lot, but I, I just want to just... I know you mentioned, oh, Trinity is a different topic, but I just... The reason why I brought it up, and I want you to think about this one, oh, well. this question I'm going to ask you... If Christianity affirms a doctrine which is logically impossible or is a true logical contradiction, wouldn't that make Christianity false? Yes or no? One more time. So if Christianity mm -hmm. affirms a doctrine and the doctrine is a true logical contradiction, would that not make Christianity false? It's, a, it's telling you to believe in something like a squared circle. Uh, I will say yes to your to your right. question. So next time we come on, if I'm here, uh, we'll have that discussion about logical problem of the Trinity. Or oh, Jake's on actually next week, isn't it? Next time. So you can speak to a brother called Jake. Oh He'll yeah, Jake is on in two weeks' time. Yeah. And you we could you have this discussion about because I'm telling you, dude you'll find out that when it comes to the Trinity, Christ the Trinitarian Christians affirm something called the logical problem. The they affirm something which is an apparent contradiction, which cannot be reconciled in any normative way. Okay. I'll, I'll take that on board and yeah, hope to see you next week and uh, respond to some of the things you guys have yeah. said. N nice to see you weren't so gobby here as you was in the chat. <laughs> No. Amazing, the transformation. Yes, yeah, sincerity, I suppose, goes a long way. Well, the thing is, you see, what you're typing, when you say those words, it just doesn't have the same strength. Well, I mean, I suppose it's much easier to be anonymous in the chat than it is to put a, yeah, but every, a name but or everything a voice. With today, everything you've come with today has been refuted. Well. Everything. And well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, dude. Yeah, man. We'll be able to refute whatever you come with. Okay. Inshallah. Right. Happy days. Take care. Cheers, mate. Ciao. Ta -da. Now it's time for the halftime entertainment. It's Snoop. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. <laughs> what do you want? I want to say that uh, one day, Hamza, you will be a Pentecostal and you will convert. Oh, you will convert one day and shut you will up. be a pastor. Is that what you've come to say? Is that what you've well, come to say? part of it I'm, I'm just i'm i'm just letting you know of the the future anyway so i thought i would just say what uh, the brother was saying before i mean what i don't get is i mean your allah created our religion basically well, no he didn't he did i'm sorry well, no, he didn't. He didn't. your your gospel writers created your religion no i'm yes. sorry but when you read yeah. B04157, the most famous verse that you like to, you know, defend. I mean, that, that, that verse is... Snoop, Snoop. there were Christians alive at the time, who didn't, uh, the first century, didn't believe in the crucifixion. Jesus. Yeah, but you're... That so, so what, does that have to, what does that have to do with Allah? What I'm trying to say is, your Allah deceived everyone into thinking that Jesus... No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Oh, really? Well, those Christians didn't think he was crucified. Oh, but it says your Allah, it, it was made to resemble to them. No, it what, doesn't. It didn't say that at all. It just said it appeared to them. It appeared to them. We don't know how they appeared to them, but it appeared to them. Yeah, but I'm reading Surah. So according to first century Christians, they believe Simon of Cyrene could have been on the cross. They believe Judas could have been on the cross. So, 
yeah. So, but people still thought that he died. So that went on to create Christianity. Do you understand? Because you're Allah light. No, 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 no. The only thing that creates Christianity is resurrection. And I don't that, believe Allah says Jesus resurrected. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say is if that event didn't happen in the first place, Christianity would Well, no. The, the resurrection had to happen. Without a resurrection, you have nothing. And where does Allah where does Allah teach a resurrection? Remind me. But the cross, without the cross. No, where does Allah teach a resurrection that Jesus raised after his grave? Where 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 is this found? All that is that comes afterwards, you understand. But I'm talking about the cross, the crucifixion. Well, well no, no, but the point I'm asking you is this. Where no, I'm, the, I'm asking you, without I'm, the resurrection, there is no Christianity. The subject. Without the resurrection, there is no Christianity. Standard. And, that, and also the whole historic the whole historical narrative of the crucifixion <sighs> makes no sense. None of it. And for this saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. And they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but was made to resemble to them. No, what that's just the, the English translation you're reading. Okay, so what's it saying? It basically says it appeared to them. It's how it appeared to them. What, is it, what, what was appeared to them? You, you, we, you, we don't, okay, they thought they'd crucified Jesus. How, how, can you think you, how can you think you crucified? You crucified I, I, you did or you did? Because they think they're crucifying Jesus, so maybe they're crucifying someone else. What does that even mean? They were crucified. Okay. The Read the next verse. Read the next verse. Read the next two verses. Oh, God. Right, I got 04157. Uh, read, the, no, read the two verses afterwards. Um, I, I don't have the I, I had the verse up, but I don't have the He only up. has one verse. He only uses one verse. <laughs> What's the, that's crazy. They killed him not, they crucified him not, it appeared so to them. But we young, see young we, well, have you ever raised him have to you ourselves? Ever, what is the next yeah, have you ever had a situation where where you have witnesses to uh, like a, an accident or a crime and a couple of witnesses they differ with each other but that, that that's a rubbish explanation you either killed the man or you didn't which you, you, you can't have both ways you can't have the okay no, I'm just saying people, people could people misidentify man, people he, yeah, people could misidentify people could they not you can't misidentify the most famous pan, uh, person at that time. It's, like, it's, it's, it's in, in, impossible. You Jesus can the, misidentify. He was the most famous person, was he? Everybody's seen that. his face and... You know, yeah, in Jerusalem. Really? Yeah. Thousands. Of really? Why, did Judas years. Kiss him? Why did Judas kiss him? Because he betrayed him. No, no. Why did <laughs> Jesus <laughs> kiss him? Why did Judas kiss him? Because he knew that he was going to betray him. That's why. No, no, why? No, no, no. Jesus yes. kissed him in the garden to identify him. In a dark, yeah. Yeah, and what's the color Judas? He was in broad daylight. It was a thousand people. Do you know who he was? Okay. Jesus? Judas oh kissed Jesus. Is that your excuse? Is that, is Jesus that your kissed, Judas kissed Jesus to identify him. To know who, think, so they knew who to arrest. Are you saying the thousands of people who were there? Uh, there was, was no thousand people in the garden of Gethsemane. No, I'm talking about at the crucial at, at the event. Because remember, before that, they they stoned and beat him. They they, they actually beat him, so they, they they knew it was him. Why do Christians believe Simon of Cyrene was on the cross and not Jesus? <laughs> if they all knew who he looked like, oh, come on now, that's it's such it's such a crazy uh, um, excuse. No, no, no. Why do Christians <laughs> lazy. In, in the first century believe it wasn't Jesus on the cross but Simon of Cyrene? If everybody knew what Jesus looked like, why? <laughs> it's just, just crazy that you're trying to try, try, try. I'm asking a question if everyone knew what it looked like they would know that Simon of Cyrene that's not Jesus that's Simon of Cyrene why did why did they believe it wasn't why did they believe they did why did they look at that cross and say that's not Jesus <laughs> just a crazy like lazy explanation they knew it was, it was Jesus they knew because they they, because they beat him before well, no they know they didn't because they didn't believe yes, they did. it was Jesus and they were butchered and killed for it for not believing it was Jesus to be honest, young Welsh, you're using a lazy you're using a lazy explanation no, by saying are. he was the most famous person there. Everybody knew what he looked time. like. You have to of demonstrate, course. you have to prove this. Prove to me that thousands of people knew what Jesus looked like. Um the um when he gave the um the the Sermon on the Mount, when he gave that, when he healed the people 
um, you know, during his healings, his teachings, his, you know, is, is there me? Prove to me. That's not proving. Yes, You're quoting proving. text that I don't know an authority, which you can't even prove well, yourself as an authority. I claim yeah, authority. Yeah, but that young Welsh, even, even though you claim it's an authority, none of those accounts actually tell you how many people were present. So you can't say there was thousands. Um, hello, he fed so, 5,000 people. Uh -huh. It's not hard. He fed 5,000 people. Let me ask you a question. If he fed 5,000 people, why immediately after feeding 5,000 people did the Pharisees come and ask him for a sign? Why did he need to feed 5,000 people? He just fed 5,000 people. Yeah. Why would they come to him and ask him to prove who you are? Why would they come and ask him to prove who you are? Yeah, he's just fed 5,000 people with two loaves of bread and three fish or whatever. Yeah. Why would you need to come and ask him to do another miracle? Why? Well, is is that something wrong? I mean, is that something bad? Well, no, it doesn't make any sense, does it? He's just fed 5,000 people with two loaves of bread and three fish, and you're still yeah. doubting him. Well, obviously, people still obviously doubt Jesus. Even today, you doubt Jesus. Time to say goodbye. Okay, bye. Because we got Robin! <laughs> yeah, hi, you guys. One second, one second. Hey, Google. One second. Hey, Google. Give Robin one minute timer. All right, a one minute timer called Robin, starting now. Go on. <laughs> okay, you want me to, yeah, sort of hopefully uh, you can hear me all right today um, and that I'm not sort of cutting in and out because um, it's not fair on, uh, on, on all the listeners or yourself. But um, look, I'd like to pick up um, from where I was last time, which was about four streams ago, eight weeks ago. Um, we were having a discussion about the um, difference between uh, heaven and, uh, and what the Bible speaks of heaven and also what uh, um, the Islamic Jannah is what we find in the Quran. So there's sort of quite strong differences. And um, uh, for, uh, I don't know whether, I don't know whether you were there, uh, Sharif or um, uh, Ali Mani, but um what uh, I'd like to sort of uh, carry on going to be before Hamza sort of took me down what I'd call the rabbit hole of sort of Paul and uh, um, and circumcision, been teaching circumcision to the Jews. Um, so is that my minute up now? Okay. Yes. Okay. So what's his argument? <laughs> okay. About, okay. So, the argument? argument, the argument's basically... Um, he thinks the Christian at heaven with no sex and nothing going on there um, is better than Islamic heaven. Is that true? Is that what, is that what you think, Robin? Well, I, I would think that, out, that, that that Christian heaven will be a lot better than what the Islamic heaven is, but also what, I, what the uh, Islamic heaven is in contradiction to what Jesus taught, because Jesus said that in heaven there is neither male nor female. But basically, we're as the angels of God. Now, the only reason why we actually like sex is because it's a biological function of, of our body, and right. uh, it's, uh, it's driven by certain it's hormones. We've, we've we've got testosterone, we've got libido, we've got those sort of things that sort of make us want to have sex. Now, um, in the uh, uh, in the resurrection, you know, uh, I, I don't think that sort of we, we're going to have a biological body that's going to be inter um, that will be uh, having sex and and. Uh, um, multiplying because um, that's basically the, the ultimate reason for having sex is to have is to have offspring, um, and uh, but I'd sort of like to sort of challenge some of that the the, the ideas that you find in the in the Quran in uh, Surah fifty five. Um, now you guys uh, are going to be uh, lying down on couches and you're going to have these uh, young boy servants. You're going to have your virgins with you, and also your family now. Uh, Sharif, let's say your father was a good Muslim man um, and his father was also a good Muslim man. Now, uh, you're obviously going to be um, with your father and with your grandfather and grandfathers and all those sort of things. And you're kind of be you're going to be their little boys um, and uh, you're going to be their sons. You're going to be their grandsons and great grandsons and all that. And they're going to have their virgins. They're going to have their young boys. Um, and, uh, you know, it's uh, I know the, the uh, uh, Quran, it speaks about ranks. Um, that you're going to be sort of in these sort of different ranks and sort of groups. But look, um, you know, if you're going to be lying down on these couches with 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 all these other people around you, um, it just kind of seems seems a great uh, sort of multitude of um, 
uh, of uh, yeah, sort of it just it it just doesn't kind of make sense to me as far as as far as what sort of genre is concerned. Oh, yeah. So whereas the is Christian, the Christian heaven, okay, we're there with God Almighty, we're there, and the Bible says, you know, um, I hasn't seen nor has he heard, neither neither has it entered into the heart of man those things God has prepared for those who love Him. So is that what Christianity says? Well, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says, yeah, um, that um, I hasn't seen, nor has he heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what uh, what God has prepared for, prepared for them. Whereas the, the Janna, says yeah. the Janna appeals to carnality. It appeals to our flesh. It appeals to human desire, to human, to, to, to basically sort of uh, physical urges and physical impulses, which are the result of certain biochemicals. That, so do you think that that's our, wrong? Our do you think produces. that's wrong? Do you think that those pleasures are wrong? Like eating sure. a nice steak, as an example. Yeah, and I would well, say sort of... Or even, having, or even having intercourse with your spouse in, in paradise. What's wrong yeah. with that? Yeah, okay, well, how would your spouse feel about, you know, wouldn't they feel second rate to these beautiful hurries that you've got? Well, you know? actually, Who actually, our, our wives will be more beautiful than them. It but is Robin, before, before we get into, like, you know... Would they be jealous? Would they not be jealous? Would concepts of jealousy exist, etc.? Is there anything wrong in having a nice steak? No, there's nothing wrong with it, having us. Well, basically, there are certain... is there anything wrong with wanting a nice steak in paradise? God has given us taste buds. There'd be nothing wrong with with with, with taste. There's, there's nothing wrong with sort of uh, with, with beauty. So there's, there's nothing there's, wrong with that. So there's nothing yeah. wrong with quote unquote desires like having a steak. Sure, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. What I'm saying is, is and it would be it, the best those... steak in the world, won't it? It would be like the well, amazing. It would be like a steak that would be better than anything in in this world, the one in paradise. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I I, I realise that uh, in the Quran it says that there is going to be meat in heaven, but that meat is going to be coming from animals. It's got to come from some something that that dies that actually gives up its life. You know, that's that would be wrong. Sort of meat is. For you, that would be wrong. No, I'm not saying that's wrong. But what do, you guys eat, do you guys eat in heaven? Do you, do you eat in heaven, in Christian heaven? Uh, in, in, in heaven, it speaks about fruit. Do you eat? Um, you, eat you eat fruit? So, yes, yes. I, I, I presume that... Too much that, fruit that, is not good for you, man. It's a laxative. Can you eat steak? Can you eat steak in heaven? Your heaven? Well, I... It, it, it doesn't say that there's going to be meat in heaven. It, it speaks of fruit. So there won't be meat in heaven? Well, I, I I wouldn't think that there would be meat because basically meat is a is is a uh, a, a product from living things that have been killed. You know, yeah, but you're vegetarian. Are you a vegetarian? Oh, sorry, you you both speaking. What was that? Oh, are you a vegetarian? No, I'm not a vegetarian at all. No, I well, like what's, wrong with, what's wrong with yeah. killing animals to eat? I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with with with. with, with, with no, because because saying, because big, 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 because that, say that no is. Death in no, well, there's no death in heaven. Is it, that what it is, Rob? In no, heaven, there is no death. In so heaven, right. no but Robin, death. Robin, Robin, you can no you have, could, here, could God it? create meat? So could God create meat without killing an animal? Sure, God, God could create meat without right. killing an so animal. So what's wrong with a steak in heaven then, where no no animal was murdered to create it? Well, look, if, if there are if, if there are stakes in, in heaven, or not I'm I, I'm not. Robert, is, be, is your is speak. your main problem with is the idea of sex? Is that the main problem? Because no, you're not you no, don't have a problem with steak. Let's be quite no. right. You don't have a problem with fruit. You don't have a problem with chocolate cake. Yeah, you don't have a problem with any of these things in paradise. What about driving a Ferrari? Driving Ferrari? Do you have a problem with that? <laughs> I don't think there's going to be cars in heaven. No, but why if not? somebody wants one, whatever you want, why not? Why not? <laughs> well, well, like if we want to go somewhere, we we, we just go there, you know. Yeah, but you might. So, what if you want to drive a car? Or you drive a Ferrari? So, I've never driven a Ferrari. So, what if I want to drive a Ferrari in the afterlife? It's, look, if I yeah, want to fly yeah. a jet plane, <laughs> can I fly a jet plane? Yeah, well, look, if, if there are planes and Ferraris and motorbikes and those sort of things, those are things that human makes. Do you okay. have Ferraris and jet planes in your Christian heaven? <laughs> Could you have it? I don't is, think, it is it wrong to have I don't, it? I don't think so. But see, the only reason why sort of... I'll the, play a PS5 uh, all day. 
the only reason why basically you have the, all the these sort of virgins and that sort of thing in in in, in your heaven and the Quran speaks about it is because uh, um, it's the it's the belief when you've got sort of young men that are filled with with testosterone they're going off to do their sort of jihad and uh, they sort of think that they're going to be rewarded with these virgins oh, in heaven oh, so man. they're sort of given this you know paradise. What, that sounds just stupid when you when you talk like that, Robin. And I well, assume you're you're an older gentleman, older than us here. You mat- you should be mature, and you should have mature level of argumentation. That type of gutter that argumentation. A, it it that is a genuine gutter, argument. That type of gutter argumentation doesn't cut it. I need to stop that type of argumentation. That, let's be honest that, with that you. Let's, let's, be, let's be real. Let's be, firstly pleasure for a muslim a believer in paradise is being able to see and be with their lord that's the greatest pleasure all these other peripheral issues yes they are part of it but also the prophet peace be upon him you know what he said about paradise he said that god has prepared a paradise in which no eye has ever seen no ear has ever heard and what has never even occurred in a human heart that's what god has prepared in paradise all these things are there to beautify further but they're not the main thing so please robin don't get don't talk this utter rubbish about how young men with testosterone wanting to go fight jihad and kill people so they can get you know sex in heaven that's just stupid yeah don't say that type of argument here yeah if you if you've got a problem with eating steak having sex all of these things yeah and you think they are somehow base, you know, lowly and baseless, you know, base is a human being, then to be quite frank, your argument is no longer against Islam. Your problem is that you think these things are inherently evil, that God has created within human beings, these capacities to enjoy these things. We believe as Muslims that if you do it in accordance to, to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded, that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in doing this way, you can even get rewarded with these things. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said to his companions, said, you get rewarded sleeping with your wife. And they said, and then the Prophet, he said, if you were to do it in the incorrect way, would you not be sinful? Meaning that these things are not good or evil in and of themselves. It's how you enact them according to the commands and prohibitions of God. Yeah, so you need to get out of this dualistic, you know, uh, matter and spirit mentality which comes from a greco-roman idea it doesn't come from you know what god has actually said it comes from a pagan philosophy which has been adopted by christianity Robert, oh, do you yeah, think you're just... a cloud with a harp I mean, that's that's kind of sort of catholic sort of thinking not at all no, um, gonna, so give me give me an example of christian heaven okay so if we look in uh, Revelation chapter twenty, no, no, I don't, says, don't, don't need your sources. I'm assuming you've got your ref, your references. Just tell yeah. me about it. Okay, so, okay, we we exist with God. So what uh, Sh- Sharif okay. said was so right, and in, 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 in so that we. we actually see and we actually dwell with God. Although, so do we. Uh, pardon? So do we. Yeah. Okay, so we actually see we should dwell with God. There is a a, a new a, a new heaven and new earth. There's a new Jerusalem, and that Jerusalem is uh, about sort of two thousand miles wide, two thousand miles high. Jerusalem and heaven. So no, it's a new Jerusalem. It's in not heaven, the old. There is is a heavenly Jerusalem. A heavenly Jerusalem. What can you do in Jerusalem? It's only two thousand well, miles. Okay, it's just like so walking about playing a harp. What can you do in this Jerusalem? What is there to do? Oh, well. What, what did Jesus say in, in, in uh, John? No, no, just tell me. No, I, don't, I don't want you to tell, tell me what Jesus said because we know you don't know. But just tell us what I, you I think do, is going to happen I in do heaven. Not. What okay, you're looking for. Are, what have you got to look there, forward there are, there are mansions in heaven. Okay, there is there is a, uh, a a river that flows from God, and that has trees that uh, that grow alongside the river, and the fruit from that trees that set up for the healing of the nations. They walk and eat okay, fruit. It is it is it is a place. It is a place where there is no more sorrow. Is your wife with crying. you? Is your wife with you? Look, um, if, if if my wife's a believer, yes, she'll be with me. Um, Can you have sex and, with your wife? And uh, 
Well, no, no, because because basically, you can't have sex with your wife. there is neither male nor female. Jesus said there is neither male nor female, but we're so as the angels what, of though? God. Okay, so we, we won't be interested in sex. We won't be interested in in, in probably have it, having stakes and those sort of things. Okay, those those are, are sort of human <sighs> things. They are biological sort of. Uh, Where does Jesus say there's no male or female and, in heaven? Okay, we, 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 when when he was arguing with the uh, well, when the scribes and wait, Pharisees wait, wait, wait. Were, quote it, quote it, quote it, quote it. Which which which, which gossip? Um, it's I'd, yeah, well, I, I, I could find if you, if you want me to, but it, uh, but but Tell basically, me the name I'll of the gossip. Where the, I'll, tell I'll, me the I'll, name of the gossip. Look, look, you know where, where, where it is. I've, 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 I've got a it beforehand. Just tell me the name of the gossip. You, 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 you have read it before. Of, okay. Heaven. In the context, the context of the story is that the no. Give uh, me the name of the gossip. The, Who's the author the, of the gossip that you're referring to? Oh uh, well, okay. I'll I'll, I'll 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 have to have a have a look at um and and, and Google it then. But basically, uh, to find it quickly, um, see the clues you know, in the word gossip. Christian heaven is transgender. <laughs> Gender it's fluid. not trend. It's not transgender. Gender fluid. You could choose to be a man or a woman. Better be that in heaven. But where is the angels of God? This is what you got to look forward to. Gender neutral. <laughs> no. Well. Hours. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, what's the sort of point of of of, of having genitalia in heaven? So, <sighs> to use. See, I like the no, idea of having the power of rubbish. Peace. Your argument is rubbish. Yeah? <laughs> it's just a complete pile of nonsense. You're well, saying, well, my saying heaven that... is better than your heaven. Yeah. It is, not, you've got no it's not on what was better or not better. It's a heaven from wish. <laughs> it's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Who would be inspired to be a Christian? I mean, I'd rather be a, risk being a Muslim. Yeah, where is the angels of God? He's, he's imagining like you know, like Star Trek, you know, that kind of place where they walk around in like white kind of thing, but they're not like male or female, it's kind of alien. So it's a passage where the where the scribes and Pharisees were uh, were asked, were, were, were um, testing Jesus, where he said that there was, um, you know, how you know who your wife is? If she, how you know who your wife is? Where sort of one man dies and sort of one man. Um, um, so how will you know who your wife is if there's no man? And, 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 and his brother, his, his brother. I, I, well, basically, I, I, I think that we will have, um, there will be characteristics that we have in our human body, which will also have, have in our heavenly body. Well, they said they were no male or female, so how would a female identify as a female? Well, because you, you sort of recognise their facial features, you'll sort of still see those. Uh, those or she'll have female features. Um, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure on that. Do they wear clothes? Uh, we have white robes. We give it. <laughs> No, I'm not making it up. That's basically what it says. It says that you know that will be white. Uh, there will be um, white robes. White um, robes, genderless. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's at a well, stage. We're just, just going to walk around eating fruit. We, Forever. And what what Sharif quoted before about uh, I, I didn't actually know that. Also said that in the Quran or in the Islamic literature, that in heaven there is neither male nor female. But but sorry, I'm not uh, that. Um, um, I has not seen, nor has ear heard, neither has it entered the heart of man the things that God has for those that that, that love Him. So, th does oh, that say that in the Quran? So, um, I, I hasn't seen, nor has ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of well, man. Well, so we just said the Quran says. No, yeah, but uh, but, but whereabouts in the Quran? The hadith, does it say it's that? from the Hadith. Oh, sorry, from the Hadith from the Prophet oh, Muhammad. It's, it's from the Hadith, okay, because. Because what what that hadith is actually quoting from uh, from from uh, New Testament scripture? No, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. No, it's not. Yeah. It's, it's just maybe not. confirming what Jesus taught. So what? I has not seen or heard. You heard that's in one Corinthians two verse uh, verse. Well, the eye has not seen or heard. So it's exactly what we believe. Yeah, but see, as I say, that, that I want that to know hadith, where Jesus says you'll be, where does Jesus that say you'll be hadith is quoting that, that hadith is quoting Paul. 
Where, do, where does it say Jesus is? Where does Jesus teach that you're going to be genderless? So neither has I seen, nor has he heard, nor entered the heart, the, the, the mind of man, what God has prepared for those who love him. So, so that's that's one uh, that's one Corinthians two verse nine. That's not Jesus. So, no, 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 no. That's what Paul said. Who cares what Paul says? Yeah, but well, obviously, uh, obviously, the, the, someone in, in in the Hadith had had copied. Uh, had no, copied no, 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 two, no, no, two nineteen. No, no, no. Where does Jesus teach that you'll be genderless? Oh, okay. Um, I'll just ask my wife. She, she, she'll she'll find out for me. Hey, Sal. What about some scripture that say that uh, um, that um, in Jesus said in heaven, like, uh, um, in heaven there is. Um, Sal, where does Jesus teach Robin won't know who you are? You, you know, in, in, in a verse I mean about each of the saying with the scribes and Pharisees. Yeah. Is Sal behind you, Robin? <laughs> Sal. Oh, that's my wife. Yeah. That's yeah, it, yeah. Sal, that... Say, Hamza asking you, Sal, where does the Bible teach that Where's Jesus that? says? That okay, okay, it's, 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 okay, it's, okay, it's Matthew 22, verse 30. Matthew 22, verse 30. Yeah, okay, okay, so, so, uh, it says, um, how does self feel about con that? Context, oh, okay, you, you, you are in error because you do not know the scripture of the power of God at the head at the resurrection. People will neither marry nor be given in marriage. Matthew, Matthew marriage what? shall be as the angels of God. What is it? What is it? Matthew what? Matthew, uh, Matthew 20, 22, verse 30. Verse 30. Okay. So, now there were seven brothers and months. The first one married and died. And since he had no children, left his wife to his brother. The same thing happened to the second and third brother. Right on down to the seventh. Finally, the woman died. Now then, at the resurrection, whose wife will she be of the seven, since all of them were married to her? Jesus replied, You are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. What about the resurrection of the dead? Have you not read what God said to you? I am the God of Where does it mention male or female? Genderless. Oh, okay, so 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 that's in Galatians, um in Galatians. Oh, that's not Jesus. Okay, that's not Jesus again, that's just Paul. No. No, but but he says that that they are like the angels of God. Okay. So the angels, Robin, you got to read your comments. Okay, so 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 it says that we are like the angels in heaven. So Robin, Do the know. angels have sex with the women of earth. I'm not sure who those sons of God were in Genesis chapter six. Well, who were they? They saw the women of the earth and saw them as fair. Yeah, the I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not quite sure what, who, uh, who 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 like. The, Sound the, like angels to me. Yeah, I'm not sure if they are. Like, see, they they could. Who were they then? Who were they then? Not angels, not men. Who were they? Well, there we're sort of going back into into sort of uh, human history, and uh, you know, we sort of don't really know uh, who those um, sons sons of uh, sons, sons of God. Of God. They, they could be this. They how many sons does God be, have? They could be. Demonic entities. Well, they could be angels of God. I don't demonic really know. entities. I thought, I thought you believed they were fallen angels. I'm not going to defend. I'm not going to defend the sort of first um, eleven chapters of the. Book no, no, but you're making a claim that angels are genderless. Yeah, according to your Bible, they had sex with women. No, that, those those are called the sons of God, and we don't know but who, who, the sons who, who of were God they. Were. Who were they? But as I say, we don't know who they were, and 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 you don't know and, who they were. I'm not going to. I'm not going to speculate who the, who those sons of God were and 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 who the daughters of, of of men were. In fact, I sort of think that there's a whole lot of sort of mythology in those first eleven chapters of uh, of Genesis. So you I what? don't sort of take. I, I, you think I, it's I mythology? Don't take, well, I, I I think there's a whole lot of a, a whole lot of mythology in there, which which. So you um, don't believe it's. You don't think it's caught in history. Well, I, if. If you look at that, the, the 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 first parts of Genesis, you know, I do, I don't believe that the world was created in seven day in, in six days. I sort of don't, you know, six little days, and and uh, you know, I'm not sure if there was a, a Garden of Eden. I'm not. I, I don't think. I don't think the uh, original Adam lived only lived lived six thousand years ago, and uh, um, you know, so 
I know the Quran, you know, speaks quite a bit about Adam. In fact, Adam, Adam, as I understand in, in the Quran, is 90 foot tall. Is that right? He was sort of 60 arms in, in, in height. It's in the Hadith, yes. It's not in the Quran. Yeah. Oh, it's in the Hadith, yeah. Okay, so so um, you know, if if Adam was sort of ninety feet, and we're the we, we're the children of Adam, then we're sort of pretty small compared to him, aren't we? Yeah. So so if so, those sons of God could have been sort of sons of uh, it, it. It could have been uh, recorded as re, uh, referred to as sons of Adam because in the book of well, they uh, Luke, referred, they weren't ref no 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 they weren't referred to the sons of Adam. They referred to as sons of God. Well, yeah. As I say, it's it's a a uh, those, those first those first eleven chapters are there's to me there's a whole a whole lot of mythology in there which may not have been. So you're going to put the first chapters under the bus? Well, I'm I've, I've I've said it before on the on the stream, Hamza, that I sort of think there's probably um, you know quite a bit of bathwater in the Old Testament. You know, it's sort of it's it's, it's not all necessarily true. How would you know what's true and what's not? That's that's uh, that's a very good question. So to me, I sort of try to listen to what the Holy Spirit says. So we don't know who that sort of Nephilim are. Uh, it says, you know, men began to increase the numbers on earth, and the daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw the daughters of men were beautiful, and they married any of those they choose. And the Lord said, My spirit will not strive with man forever, for he is mortal. His days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them, they who were the sons of God. Old... Pardon? Who were the I don't know who God? those sons of God were. Okay. So, some, so God has God has more than one son, then. If 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 you look at sort of some parts in the Old Testament, you would sort of say that. But Jesus is the only begotten of Son of God. So Adam Adam is referred to and called. Isn't David referred to as begotten? The uh i'm yeah i'm not one, sure two, i'm seven. not sure on that one so how, how, well no no that's what that's what that's what it says so david is also a begotten son so how can jesus be the only begotten if david is also begotten where did it say that david was the only begotten son of god it doesn't say he was no, no 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 it didn't yeah. say only where? psalm psalm 2 7 psalm 2 so sort of uh, a lot of psalm 2 is actually messianic So there's quite a bit of, of uh, Psalm 2. Um, let us break the chains. So the one enthroned in heaven last, God scoffs at them. I proclaim the decree of, of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son today. I have become your father. Ask of me and I will give you the nation to inherit the inheritance of the year. Okay, so... Um, that doesn't say he was the only begotten son. The, the we didn't say that, did we? Really. And, and as I said, you know, that, that's, that, does, that's does, 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 does God refer to David as his son? I think that probably God would consider David to be um, his son by faith. And yes. did he say that today I've begotten thee? He I said, no, to, today, I, I, to, today I have become your father. Today I have become your father. You are my son, so therefore there was obviously a point in, in 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 David's life, in which you know God considered him to be his uh, his son. Um, so yeah, that's just basically it's a thing of faith, you know. Like I I, I would all cons also consider. Um, well, in uh, the Hebrew, in the Hebrew, it's a, it's begotten. Is it? This is okay. the point. You see, the English tries to hide it. Is it okay? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you're right. Look, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm still not going to argue with that. But also to say, sort of Psalm two and and also Psalm twenty two. A number of Psalms are actually often referred to as messianic. Well, um, Psalm two seven is referring to David. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm. I'm I, I don't I, I'm, can I read you something else from Zachariah? Okay. Okay, then the angel who was speaking to me came forward and said to me, look up and see what is appearing. I asked, what is it? He replied, it is a basket. And he added, this is the iniquity of the people throughout the land. Then the cover of lead was raised, and there in the basket sat a woman. He said, this wickedness, and he pushed her back into the basket and pushed its head down. Then I looked up, and there were before me two women with the wind in their wings. They had wings like those of a stork, and they lifted up the basket between heaven and earth. 
Where are they taking? Where are they taking the baskets? I asked the angel who was speaking to me. He replied, "To the country of Babylonia to build a house for it. When the house is ready, the basket will be set there in its place." Kind of implies women angels. Zechariah yeah. five five to eleven. So in that. Um, okay, so, so what was the reference to Hamster Zechariah 5, 5, yep. 11, 5 to 11. Okay, yep. Yep. So I'll repeat the part that's more important. Then I looked up, and there before me were two women. Yeah? There before me were two women um, with the wind in their wings. They had wings like those of a stork. And they lifted up the basket between heaven and earth. Where are they taking the basket? I asked the angel who was speaking to me. He replied, he replied uh, to the country of Babylonia to build a house for it. When the house is ready, the basket will be set there in its place. So from gentlest angels, we have the Bible describing male and female angels. Well, as I say, I, I don't really know what he was looking at there. He, he, he obviously saw a vision like, you know, before that in the first part of that uh, chapter, um, there's, it's all about the flying scroll. So, um, um, does Zachary you know, say he saw two women flying with wings? That, 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 that's what it said. He said he saw, yep. Yeah. And also, right. there's actually. Um, so, what happened to what happened to Zachary, who's speaking to a male angel, telling him about these women angels? What happened to genderless angels? Well, we we don't know who who, who those women were, and uh, we don't know who this, we don't know who those women with wings were. Okay, no, we don't. Robin, the thing is, even in the commentaries of Matthew twenty two thirty, when it says like the angels, it means it doesn't mean like literally like non gender. It simply means that you won't get married in that sense. That's the context. You you read the commentaries. That's what it'll tell you. It will not tell you that you're non-binary yeah okay so looking earlier um in, in, in the first part of that verse verse though it says that you know they are not they will neither marry nor be given in marriage so whereas I mean, you're still you know, being male or female you just won't be married you'll just all be single yeah okay but the, 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 gender the, the whole thing is, is that is, Do you is think that, that adam was meant to have sex with eve Well, of course, yeah. Why? I thought I, well, I thought that was the reason they were thrown out. Well, basically, what 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 did God say? He said, uh, "Subdue, subdue, and replenish the earth." So part of replenishing is subdue basically replenish going, is 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 is, is uh, going and breeding, isn't it? You know, so it's. Uh, what are they supposed um, to have... in the garden? What was that? Sorry. Okay, so they only uncovered their nakedness because they ate from the apple, isn't it? Well, as I say, I'm I, I'm I'm not sure on 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 the whole sort of garden of Eden. No, according and, to your and, according to your mythology, according to your mythology, um, yeah, um, they ate from the apple. Then they recognised their nakedness. Yes. Um, and then they covered it, which whatever. And then they were yeah, uh, yeah. Out on grace, yeah. if you like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Were they created though to do that? Oh look, obviously, sort of, you know, God has uh, has has given us sort of genitalia, you know, like all other creatures, to basically breed and multiply, and uh, you know, it's a wonderful thing. Breed and multiply. You know, just, well, if you don't recognise your nakedness, how are you going to breed and multiply? Yeah, I I guess they. The, the interesting thing, Hamza, is that they actually hid from God. They didn't hide from one another. They didn't hide their nakedness from one another, but they hid from God because because they had. Uh, had sort of their eyes had, had been open to, to 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 some to something to some other realm, if you like. God had sort of their innocence had been broken, but their innocence was not broken because they they realised that they you know had, uh, had 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 sexual genitalia. Their innocence was uh, uh, was broken because they had, they realised that they why they did had, they cover uh, their sexual genitalia? Well, but basically because they uh, yeah I'm, I I don't know I don't know. What does the Bible say? Well, it's it's it says that they were ashamed. After what? After after their eyes their eyes were opened and and they they saw. But they never ate from the apple. Yeah, but I don't, I, I don't know. I sort of think it's 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 a, a that that yeah. I as I say I 
am not going to defend this literal um, inter interpretation of the first few books of uh, Genesis. You know, I sort of think that they're basically sort of stories. They're, they're symbolic stories that have been passed down. And I don't think that Adam was only 6,000 years old. I want you to go away and do some homework, Robin. I want you to go away and work out if angels are genderless, why is Zachariah talking about seeing female angels? Well, as I say, that's a, 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 a symbolic thing. But, uh, well, but as I say, why, why I is it symbolic and not literal? I don't think... I don't think that sort of sex is going to be a, be a primary no, no, no. thing in heaven. Why is it symbolic in, 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 and heaven, not in, in, heaven, in, in heaven, whereas obviously in Islamic heaven it is, and eating steak and meat is. And Why all those is it sort symbolic? Of things. Why is it symbolic and not literal? Well, because it, because it, 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 it was a vision that he had. It was well, a, 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 well, a revelation was the vision that John, J, uh, John had. Paul's was yeah, the vision that he had. So you don't have an issue with taking visions literally when it suits your narrative. No. Well, I've, I've, I've stated before that I, I think that probably 98% of the New Testament is actually baby and only 2% is probably bathwater. But a lot of the Old Testament, I sort of think that a lot of that um, is bathwater. But so. you, you, when Paul says he has a vision, you believe him and you don't think it's a metaphor or, or not true. When John on the Isle of Patmos has a vision yeah. about yeah. Jesus and all this stuff. You've got mm -hmm. no issues with accepting it as true. That's, that's, that's correct. Therefore, what? Why all of a sudden is this vision not true? Even if it's no. a vision. Look, what I'm saying is, what sort of Zechariah uh, saw, and what some of those sort of minor, what we find in some of those books of the minor prophets, um, and you know, and and quite large section of the Old Testament, you know. I'm not going to defend those, those those scriptures because you know I don't think no, that they, oppose, they, oppose, they oppose you, Robin. They oppose you. They go against Look, exactly what you're saying. They go against Paul, and they go against what you. Yeah. Okay. Well, if 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 they contradict what the New Testament says and they contradict what Paul says, well, I would tend to go by with what Paul says and what the New Testament says because basically they because that's part of the New Covenant. So Paul, um, Paul, so, Paul has more authority. Paul had a vision. Why do you believe he had? Why do you believe Paul had a vision? Well, I don't think Paul had. Well, when you, you, you mean when, when he had the revelation of Jesus on the road to Damascus? Is that what you you mean? He had a vision. Why do you believe he had a vision? Well, he sort of says that he did, and 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 those what, those. those why do you believe it? Why do you believe it? Why do I believe it? Because it was written from. Uh, it, it was written by his companion Luke. You know, sort no. of uh, wrote the sort of wrote, wrote no. the Luke only wrote what Paul told him. Yeah, sure, sure. And also, right. sort of so Paul. why do you believe what Paul says? It doesn't matter if he told Luke well, if Paul's big, lying. Because it's something that Paul experienced that he went through. You know, how do you know? Therefore... How do you know he experienced it? Well, why do you believe he experienced it? Well, if it's just a if, vision. If, 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 if you look at the rest of what Paul Paul's writer says and the change in Paul's life from someone who was at who was persecuting Christians and against them uh, to somebody who was who to to, to completely uh, change and become a Christian himself and a, and a follow of what he called the way we, we talked about uh, Paul was against the teachings of Jesus and Paul corrupted the teachings of Jesus what change no Paul well what what changes is, is is that Paul had had an experience of the risen Christ. He actually saw he actually experienced Jesus on the road to the no Jesus no no. He claims to have a vision of the risen Christ, but I'm asking what changed. So one minute he's persecuting the message of Jesus, and then he's corrupting the message of Jesus. What changed? No, he's not corrupting the message of Jesus. He is. Jesus said, "Think not, I've come to the laws or destroy the prophets before me. I'm not here to destroy but fulfil." And not a tittle tattle of the law will pass till all be fulfilled. Anyone who teaches that the least of these to break the least of these commandments will call the least in the kingdom of heaven. And he who upholds the least of these commandments will behold will be called um, will be high in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you'll never enter paradise, never enter heaven. So Jesus is clear. He says, "I'm not here to destroy the prophets. I'm not here to destroy the law. I'm not here to change what Moses taught. I'm not here to do that." Okay. Paul teaches, yeah, that's what he came for. Yeah, but but the thing is, but the thing is, Hamza, when did Jesus? Where was Jesus te teaching that? He was he taught that on the Sermon of the Mount. He was speaking to Jewish people. Okay, when sort of Paul was it, was it okay? Jesus is teaching Jewish people. I've not come to change the law. Paul is teaching Jewish people. 
don't worry about the law. You're no longer justified by it. So what does Jesus say? What does Jesus say to those who say you can break the commandments? What does Jesus say? The least of the commandments. What does Jesus say? He warns you. He warns you. Yes. He who teaches you can break the least of these commandments will be least in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, who yep. teaches you can break the commandments? Say it loud. Okay. Say it proud. <laughs> it's Paul. <laughs> Look, Paul, well, not just Paul, but also all, all, also the other um, apostles too. Because if, if you actually, if you want to go back to that uh, verse that, that you've read out before in Galatians chapter 3, um, if you look at the context of Galatians chapter 3, you'll you, you see it in Galatians chapter 2. In Galatians What's the context? Two, What's the context? Okay, so, so so the so the context is that Paul is basically giving his whole his 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 whole whole argument about sort of why the um, the Galatians the Gentile believers didn't need to be need, didn't need to be circumcised. What about the Jews so, in Galatia? What about the Jews in Galatia? Uh, he so if we if we, if we look in in uh, in chapter two of Galatians. No, uh, no. What about later, the Jew in Galatia? Yeah, no, but but he says he said I took Titus along. I went in response to the revelation and set before them the gospel that I preached among the Gentiles. But I did this privately to those who seemed to to be leaders for fear that I was running or had run my race in vain. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, was compelled to be circumcised, even though he was a Greek. Okay, so that's the so so this is kind of part of the argument that Paul is sort of building, you know, in, in his letter to the Galatians. I'll say it again to you. What about the Jews that are in Galatia? Okay, well, the, the Jews, um, you know, that they can be, you know, they can be circumcised. Does, um, does Paul teach the Jews they're no longer justified by the law? Uh, he says that the law doesn't. Yeah, that, that uh, yeah, you could say that he that that, that 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 he does teach that. Yeah, and and throughout Paul's other letters, he says no need to circumcise any more Jews. Uh, I don't think it actually says that. It does it say was, that. It, it, it was an accusation that they that they had against him no, in the book of Acts. No, 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 no. Paul says no. Okay, where did we, you, you, you can show me um, where okay. Paul says First of all, do you Galatia? agree that Paul is teaching Jews in Galatia that they no longer need to keep the law? No, what he was saying is that the, the Jews that were teaching the Gentiles that they should get circumcised. No, 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 no. Yes, no, no. Don't, this, don't this is the context. Matters. This is the don't context. Matters. Paul is teaching that Jews no longer are justified by the law. Okay. Just, Paul uh, is teaching that the law was a curse upon us, but now Jesus has become the curse for us. So we, so whereas we had to follow the law before, now we just need to believe in Jesus. That's what Paul okay. is teaching. Can I just okay. Yeah, man. Sorry. Uh, just because uh, it's like one in one in the morning, I got I got to get out for work. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna knock off soon. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll, I'll don't worry. It, it, he's allowed, there's one other guest, but I think I know who it is, so he's not gonna last five minutes, five seconds. I don't think. Right. Okay. Have. So we who are Jews by birth are not Gentile sinners. This is what this is. Uh, Galatians two verse fifteen. We who are Jews by birth are not Gentile sinners. Uh, know that a man is not justified by observing the law, but by faith in Christ Jesus. In Jesus Christ, that's what you. That, that, that's the verse you're referring to, isn't it? Uh, no. Hunter, where it says, you know, no. that a man is not justified by observing. Galatians the law, three, but, I'm referring to. Yeah, but I, but I'm, but okay, you've got to look at the context of, of Galatians three, which is which is which is chapter two. So chapter two says, know that a man is not justified by observing the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by observing the law, because by observing the law, no one will be justified. So yeah, um, and it says, but but if but if we seek to be justified in Christ, it has become evident that we ourselves are sinners. Does that mean that uh, Christ promotes sin? Absolutely not. If I rebuild what I've destroyed, I prove that I am a lawbreaker. For through the through the law that I died to the law that I might live for God, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The faith I live in the body, 
I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Okay, and that's basically because we're all sinners. And we've all, you know, so... Oh, okay, so, I'll, I'll repeat my question. Forget your waffle, forget your red herrings. In Galatians 3, Paul is preaching to Jews. And he's telling Jews, you're no longer justified by the law. The law was a curse. We're, uh, we're, uh, the, we're, uh, we're away from the yoke of the, the curse now. Jesus has become the curse. And then when Paul goes to Jerusalem, the, the Jew, they, they come to Paul and said, the, the Jews here zealous for the law. I've heard that you're teaching Jews amongst the Gentiles that they no longer need to keep the law. So he's accused of doing exactly what he's doing in Galatians 3. And then the disciples say, to show you're not doing this, to show you're not doing this, because we don't believe you're doing this, Go take the Nazarite vow just to show them you're still under the law. And Paul went to take the Nazarite vow to, to act like he's still under the law, where he's clearly teaching in Galatians exactly what he's accused of. Clearly. Well, in Galatians chapter 3, what does verse 8 say in Galatians chapter 3? Okay, what I've just said is factually correct. Whether or not you can fathom what I've just said to you, but it's pretty clear Paul is teaching Jews they no longer justify by the law. It's clear. The law is a curse for us. We're removed from that curse now. Jesus has mm -hmm. become the curse for us. That's mm -hmm. it. Jesus has taken on the curse of the law. Yep. We don't know. The law is no longer. And this is what Paul says in. Um, now, I, Paul, say to you that if you receive circumcision, Christ will have no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who receives circumcision that he is bound to keep the whole law. You are severed from Christ. You who would be justified by the law, you have fallen away from grace. So what's Paul teaching the Jews about circumcision? Remind me. Well, what he's saying is not just circumcision, but what he's saying is basically that, that this whole whole law has, has condemned us. Um, Robin, Jesus said that not one tittle tassel will pass from the law. And uh, Paul and anyone who teaches that it has is the least in the kingdom of heaven. And Paul taught exactly that. So on the authority of Jesus, you should dismiss Paul as a false teacher. Good day, sir. I think I know who this is. Not going to last five seconds. Go on, mate. Speak. Come on. He's Speak. Muted. He's muted. No, yeah, he's muted, but I know. I, I think I know who he is. Mm. So I don't think he's going to last. Unless he apologised to what he said about Ijaz, maybe. Islam a lie. You gonna speak or what? Five, four, three, two, one. Forever hold your peace. <sighs> that was just a Christian sesh. Yeah, pretty much. Honestly. But it was some good information, I think, that got out there. Alhamdulillah. What do you think? Yeah, and there were a few sincere guests as well which was always which is nice so. the only thing that the dude was really mouthing up in the chat and as soon as he come on he's like yes sir, Mr. Yes, sir. at least at least he was sincere when he came on you know, whatever, yes alhamdulillah how did you enjoy your experience today sharif yeah alhamdulillah man <laughs> i was really tired today oh is it oh sorry for that, man i know where you I know this was your day off from the <laughs> arena because it was the last one, but uh, don't worry, the next one's going to be on a Thursday, and I've dragged Jake in, so you can, yeah. have, you can have a rest. But Robin, oh, Robin really irritated me. Oh, you gave him a really good, irritated me. You gave him a good answer. <laughs> it was a, it was a good, uh, yeah, response to him. It's the start. Of the I almost swore. That's how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to resist. I'm trying to stop being, the, you know, this aggressive. I'm trying, I'm trying, but sometimes. Hamza, I, I saw that video where some Christian guys over your shoulder and you turn the hat. That's like that's was that that's back in the day, isn't it? Yeah. Back in the day when you when you went to the football matches. Bring it. He, he was saying, "Take a swing." I was just gonna headbutt him. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's why you took it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I headbutt with the hat like this like that. I swear, I swear honestly, you know, because that geezer shouted in my ear and it was like, I take that as physical assault. Yeah, you can chirps here, but don't come right and lean into me. Yeah, 
because I, I I didn't like that. But then, alhamdulillah, I showed the supper. Right. I, I, and if you watch the whole video, yeah, that happens. And then I just continue the conversation for another hour, as if it never happened. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? And he got rid of him. No, no, because then their hat went back forward again. So I can see you calmed down then. <laughs> yeah. Look, it's happened on a few occasions where I've, I've got a little bit aggressive in that way. In the, all the time I got to Speaker's Corner, once with Bob, yeah, when he was harassing and following me, and I pushed him, and then I knocked Soko's camera. And one's with this guy. Imagine how long I've been going to speak his corner on two occasions, right? And then you see the comment, Lucy, look, this is Islam. This is true. He's always angry with this guy. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? But video after video after video where I deal and laugh at these jokers. Just at that particular point. It made me mad. But I've got to try to even control that. Yeah. No, I'm good at that, man. Well, you know what's making me more mad at speak's corner at the moment? It's the cameraman. You know, the Muslim cameraman. Oh, because they're all crowd around. Well, I, I try, I'm saying to look, I'm saying to them, don't, there's no need to film me. We've got, we're going to film this. It's going to be top quality. Don't need you to film it. Yeah? Don't put mics on me. Don't put mics on the guests. Don't put mics on people around me. Just relax. Go film something else. There's no need to do this. Because what they're doing, they, they film it, crap quality, crap sound, and then they just up, upload it. Could, you know, by the time we go for our evening meal, it's already up. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, they've got half a conversation, didn't miss the beginning, didn't get the end. And it's crap quality, and you're like, and then when you bring the real thing out, oh, I've seen this one. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it didn't have the same impact. Oh, yeah. And I'm, 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 I'm physically have to say to them, look, please, please not, can't, not stop putting mics on people around me, because I'm saying, no, put mic on me. They put it on some guy, and then get him to stand next to me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just stop it, stop it. I've to, uh, and I've come to, a, I've come to a solution. I think. Say, so, look, I'm going to give all of you, you three, there's three main ones. I'll give you ten minutes of footage. Nice footage, nice quality. Put it up on your channel, no problem. But put it up when I tell you to put it up, near when we're going to release the full thing. So you get that for your channels, you know, as on your channel. And at the same time, you promote the main event. That's it. Done. It's a beautiful solution for everybody. And then they're like, well, what if the non Muslims are filming you? So we don't care. There could be 10 different Muslim, non Muslim cameramen. We don't care because it's a different audience. Mm -hmm. Your audience is my audience. None of these other little channels have got, they're the same subscribers. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That's right. What's ultimated you do a Christian doing back? Nah, he was useless, wasn't he? All right, I'm going to get rid of everyone in the back chat. Um, oh, who is this? He was like a Muslim, though. Come on, you can't sneak on at the end like that. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I got, I got to do it. <laughs> Did you? All right. I'm calling oh, from the sure. United States. I said, Salam alaikum. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't do it. Um, if you want to have a chat, I'll be, I won't be live on Sunday actually because I'm going to speak this corner. So uh, I'll be live in my shop next Wednesday or something. Until then, Yemeni, I'll see you on Thursday for risk. Inshallah. Inshallah. Oh, you, are you up to anything? Let me just do. What's going on? Yeah, uh, on the 21st, well, actually, 1 o'clock in the morning on the 22nd, I have part two of my debate with uh, Christian on the question is, uh, does the Gospel of Matthew teach Jesus as God? We've had part one bef uh, a couple of months ago um, where we went through the first 14 chapters. So we went through all 14 chapters. And uh, on Tuesday, inshallah, um, we're going to go from chapter 15 to chapter 28. Are they doing that thing where they go to the Old Testament and, and see what God would say, and then they say Jesus says that, so therefore he's God? So we could use any sort of cross-reference that we wish to oh. talk about, you know, certain verses, uh, if, if, if it's relevant. Um, my problem is, is I've got a 20-minute opening statement, and I've got like a 40-minute, you know, Peace. When, when is this taking place? So it's uh, going to be one in the morning. Um, when? On Tuesday, this Tuesday coming. Oh. Yeah, so I, like, I know no one's going to watch it live. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll get it downloaded from YouTube and then upload it onto my channel when I come back from work on Tuesday. So it should be uh, uploaded by, you know, Tuesday evening. Um UK time, so around eight o'clock. Inshallah, I look forward to seeing that. Yeah, so. actually, it's not risk on Thursday; it's chivalry. Make sure you've got it. Mm. 
Yeah. Has Tuba got it for you yet? Uh, she's um, struggled to get it. I need to get a hold of Erfan and see if there's another way to, to do it. If you can well, otherwise, what, I'll, what I can do then, yeah. if Tuba wants to just, uh, I don't know, PayPal me, mm -hmm. um, or, or Super Chat, no, not PayPal, it? and then I'll, I'll buy it you as a gift that way. Yeah, if that works. I mean, I think Tuba was in the chat still, so maybe. All right, shall I leave it with me? All right, dude, take care. Good luck with your debate, inshallah. Yeah. And if you need any help, just watch some of my videos. All right. No worries. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Did, did I cut you off mid mid talk? No, I didn't say anything. You went, uh, yeah, but... All right. <laughs> Sharif is like I don't have being the resident gladiator. Like oh, yeah, I said, you're like no. Elvis in Vegas. You just came once and then you stuck there for like four years. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Anything coming new on tap? Uh, we got something this Sunday, inshallah, 7 p.m. So UK time. So people want to tune in. Open Q and A. We were meant to do it last time, actually. Last time I was on here, I said, yeah, we're doing open Q and A. We ended up not doing it because uh, brothers were a bit busy and ill. And stuff. yeah, the youth has been traveling and this and that. Yes, yeah. been traveling. Yeah, Abdurrahman's been ill, so we're gonna we, we're oh, forcing okay. ourselves. We're saying we have to do it this week. Okay. But yeah, come on! I might not watch it live. I might not watch it live because I'm gonna be at Speaker's Corner. But um, inshallah, it'll I'll be, be 7 p.m. Or you'll be uh, still at Speaker's Corner at that time. I'm probably having a meal by then, inshallah. Uh, but anyone who wants to watch Thought Adventure podcast is Sharif's real home. This is just his like home from home. <laughs> All right. So I shall see. I shall see you here in the arena in uh, four weeks' time. Salam alaikum. <laughs> it comes to the... <laughs> right, salam, top boy. Um, okay, apologize to Muslims who came on that um, I kick off because that's what we do here in the arena. It wouldn't be fair to allow anyone to to, um, to uh, remain because then it wouldn't be fair on the other ones who are don't allow to remain. Sorry, sorry, uh, Dilba Zalahi, uh, forgive me. All right, but that being said, we're going to have a celebratory eighty thousand sub mark on next Friday, inshallah. And that's just going to basically be, come and pat me on the back. Oh no, <laughs> Muslims will be welcome. Just we'll just we'll just let Muslims come on and talk. I probably won't have any guests with me. It'll just be me bouncing about. But you can come and say, um, tell you what we're going to do. Um, this is really me getting patted on the back, to be honest with you. Um, you'd be welcome to come on, and it'll be basically telling telling me and telling us in the chat what watching. Um, I'm going to say me has done for you with regards learning about islam dawah debates this that the other um, i'll let you criticize me i don't mind um inshallah so that's going to be next friday and inshallah it's not a non-muslim stream so it will be muslims who will be invited on to come and just uh on the back and it's, a, it's just a celebration that we've hit eighty thousand subs uh, i think we've nearly eighty one thousand now we were so close to it at eighty one thousand let me just uh, have a quick check. So close, which is not bad, mashallah. Yeah, we're 24 away from uh, 81,000, which is fantastic, alhamdulillah. You know, we got nearly 1,000 in two days. From Wednesday, we hit 80,000, and then two days, we've hit another 1,000, mashallah. So the target is 100,000 subs by Eid. I want my gift from YouTube on Eid to be a plaque. 100k inshallah so that's what we're going to work on so yeah so uh sorry dil but i feel really bad doing what i did but i do it to all of the muslims who come on so next friday will be 80k celebratory stream inshallah and so because i'm not going to do a sunday live this week because i'm going to speak as corner uh, probably do a book club on monday and we'll do wednesday shop um, and then, inshallah, Friday we'll do that. All right, guys. Always a pleasure. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you once more for joining. Here comes the line.